multi-game and season coverage available to meet every budget, including a segment on the Varsity Sports Radio Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona dedicated to your team. We can even help promote your booster businesses. Act fast. The season is right around the corner. Hey fans, the Arizona AIA high school football playoffs are coming. Trust the Varsity Sports Show team to live stream your football playoff games on NFHS. We are an NFHS trusted partner and will spotlight your favorite team better than anyone, including a team segment on Saturday's Varsity Sports Radio Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. We are authorized to cover every round of the football playoffs, including championships. Call or text us to reserve your postseason broadcast and production crew. Time is running out fast. 480-779-9437. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Scottsdale, Arizona. Scottsdale Saguaro High School, host site of tonight's senior night, big league game here, uh, 5A region, between the host team, the Saguaro Sabercats, and the visiting squad, the Campo Verde Coyotes. Vince Delisio here, joined by my broadcast partner, Mr. Ryan Sikora. Ryan, how you doing? I'm great. Um, once again, just like always, ready for football on a good night in Scottsdale at Saguaro High School. Senior night, Vince. So we had a chance to catch up with both head coaches uh, pregame, and uh, we're going to run those here. Ryan, you had a chance to speak with uh, Coyote head coach Ryan Freeman. Let's run that interview. We're with Coach Freeman of the Campo Verde Coyotes tonight. They faced the Sabercats in a tough road game last week. A good defensive performance against Gilbert. Uh, looking to build on it at all, Coach? Of course. Uh, we're starting to get healthy again, starting to get our full defense back. So it, it was definitely encouraging last week. And an offense that's predicated on a strong power run game and really sets your passing game up through that running game. Are you looking for more of the same tonight from that running game? Yes, uh, Connor Callaway had a great week last week. Our offensive line uh, played much better than we've played throughout the year, so we need to find a way to continue that this evening. And lastly, uh, to touch on Saguaro, it's a great offense, a great team going back to the defensive side of the ball for your team. Anything different, or is it just going to be the status quo? You know, for, for us, we've got a couple little things tonight, but there's a lot of talent out on that field for Saguaro, and if you try to do too crazy a stuff, You're just putting yourself at a disadvantage. Coyotes and Sabercats on the Varsity Sports Show Network from Saguaro High School at 7 o'clock. All right, and uh, we also had a chance. uh, Coach Mons was participating in senior night festivities pregame, so we couldn't necessarily grab him. He was really busy with that. But we did get defensive coordinator of the Sabercats, Jim Camarillo, and uh, we're going to go to that interview here real quick. Hey, guys, so I am joined by... Saguaro Sabercat defensive coordinator, Jim Camarillo. Coach Camarillo, talk to us a little bit about tonight's opponent, the Campo Verde Coyotes. Now, these guys come in with a strong running game, uh, a a big, powerful running back, a pretty capable offensive line. How did you guys prepare for them this week? Yeah, you're right. Uh, Good running game, uh, well-balanced, well-coached team. Uh, You can see that in film. So we told our kids early on in the week, hey, let's let's make sure we're on point. Let's make sure we're we're, we're good on all all of our run plays. And uh, we got to really stop the run tonight. That's a, that's a big thing for us. So you're right. I mean, uh, they're well coached. They, they want to run the ball. That's really their, their, uh, their, their plan, I think. And so I think we're ready to go. They also have a quarterback named Riley Garcia, number five. He's a pretty talented kid, uh, makes quick decisions, can throw the ball pretty well. How is your secondary prepared this week? We've done a good job this week of preparing for not only what they do, but practicing some of the things that we haven't done so well in the last few weeks so we can kind of – a little bit, be a little bit more prepared to be well-rounded tonight, not have to just do a few things. So we think we've got a pretty good menu of things to, to go on uh, with tonight. So uh, we're ready to go. There's a good passing team. I mean, they, they want to run the ball, but, but they're very athletic. They get the ball around to different guys. So we have to be prepared on point. How many touchdowns defense going to score tonight? Oh, shoot, I don't want to do that. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Coach. I'm kidding. All right, all right, guys, so defensive coordinator, Saguaro Sabercats, Jim Camarillo. Coach Cam, good luck tonight. We'll see you post-game. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and a beautiful rendition of the national anthem by the Sabercat Band. And it is, as we said, senior night tonight, so the final home game, it'll be a bittersweet uh, um, uh, ending uh, in, in the uh, regular season on this turf for many of, of, obviously, the seniors on this squad. So, Ryan, when we had a chance to visit with both head coaches, now you have had a chance to see this Campo Verde Coyote team a couple of weeks uh, during the season here. What was your biggest takeaway about uh, the talent of the team and, and uh, what they bring to the table tonight? Tough and physical, especially for a team that uh, won't really necessarily jump off the board as a in the standings. They're currently fourth in, Santan, in the 5A Santan region, but they're tough, they're physical, they love to run the football. Number 44, their running back, Connor Calloway, runs the ball tough. He's hard to stop down there. And on defense, they, they play the same way. They're good in the trenches. Their line play is very good. Um, where they might lack is sort of on the outside, where they, they don't have the greatest athletes, and that's exactly where the Sabercats will tend to exploit most teams on the offensive side of the ball anyway. So at midfield right now, the team captains, and uh, for the Coyotes, number 24, uh, that is uh, Noah Borchard, and 44, uh, Connor Calloway. And for the Sabercats, team captains tonight, number 15, Cannon Siegel, number 24, uh, Jacob Polk, number 32, Thomas DeCesaro, and number 73, uh, Parker Brailsford. And all are, are fine, uh, fine leaders for the Sabercat team uh, and have been enjoying much success this season. However, we have a couple of injuries with, with some of those key guys, as you can see down at, at midfield, that aren't suited out tonight. So how do you anticipate the, the Sabercats are, are going to compensate for the loss of of a couple of these guys that aren't suited out tonight, Ryan. A little banged up, not only do those three guys, obviously Derek English still out and Zacchaeus Cooper, the talented juniors, but I think the compensation doesn't really come with uh, anywhere else. It just comes with next man up. That's a lot of times what Jason Mons will preach. The next guy up will make plays. And I guess if you are going to say any guy is going to compensate more than the others, it'll be Javen Jacobs, who was great a week ago against Horizon, was great two weeks before that at Sierra Can against Sierra Canyon. He'll be the main guy tonight on the offensive side of the I, ball. Well, and he's been the main guy time and time again here on this uh, offense, uh, as well as contributing special teams. You know, obviously this week he was named the uh, Arizona Cardinals uh, uh, Arizona High School Football Player of the Week for his efforts last week. You know, he he uh, had almost 200 yards uh, uh, rushing, had a couple of touchdowns, threw for a touchdown as well. I mean, this guy weeks. does it all. So uh, quite a talent. But then again, he's surrounded by a lot of talent. This is just a great all-around football team with, with a lot of depth uh, at, a, at a lot of key positions. And, uh, and they're also, one thing that Coach Mons commented is a lot of these guys are young, sophomores. So they're going to be loaded for a long time. And they always will be here, and that's part of the allure of Saguaro. The coaching staff brings in good kids, and not only do they bring in good football players, good people, and they mold good people. They bring in good people, and they, they leave better players, better people at that. And I think that's one of the more the biggest testament to Jason Mons as a head coach here in his time with yeah. the Sabercats. Yeah, exactly. And we feel privileged to be part of the Sabercat family. So, in a, you know, direct, indirect way uh, through the work that we do for uh, the team and covering them all year. But it is a family atmosphere, and they preach that family, family, family. And uh, and you've got, you know, again, a lot of good people, a lot of good families that uh, that support this program. So the Sabercats will be receiving to start the game. Javen Jacobs. Uh, is uh, deep to receive as well as uh, Dejon Hinton, the talented freshman. And then kicking off for the Coyotes is 27, and that is uh, Jace Hudson. Hudson's kick, nice deep booming kick, lands about the eight yard line. Jacobs with the football, running upfield, keeping his feet, continues on his track along the sideline. Finally pulled out of bounds and Wow, and that was uh, Noah Borchard on the stop. And, but you got to imagine, I mean, the field position that they're starting with, Ryan. It's just, it's, it's, exact, it's exactly what you want if you're Ridge Dutch call. And the, what stood out there on that one was not really the blocking in any way. There was just a hole right away, and he, Javon Jacobs was just that fast. He gets in there, great field position. They're going to start on the uh, Coyotes, 35, and that'll give us Ridge Dutch call. First and 10 for the Sabercats. And as you said, Ryan, quarterback for... The Sabercats, number 12, Ridge Duchikal. We'll also get a, a look at uh, number four, Devin Dampier, at different times of the game. Split backs in the backfield, official stoppage in play here, and we'll find out what's going on. We've got an equipment issue with one of the linemen. They want that uh, jersey pulled down and not exposing any pads. 
All right, here we go. Split backs, receiver split out wide. Jacobs in motion, Dutch a call, and they give to Bogardis. Brian Bogardis, and the, uh, the analyst last week, Nick Borgia, referred to Bogardis as an angry runner. He runs angry. Yeah, Borgia called him that in the Chaparral game as well, and Nick, 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 I certainly agree with it. Nick is 100% right. That angry running style it just works for this team a lot of times around that flashiness. And a quick play change here at the line of scrimmage. Dutch a call looking over to the sideline. Second down and three. Bogardis in the backfield. Bogardis with the carry once again. Finds a lane along the right side. And getting the first down for the Sabercats, Brian Bogardis. And assisting on the stop, Borchard. That's the perfect example of why you say he's an angry runner. He, Jaden Matthews would have tried to make a cut there and beat him with his elusiveness. Bogardis just tries to run straight through him. And I think you'll see a lot of that tonight with the Campo team that likes to play the same way. Maybe they match that sort of intensity. First and 10 on the 17 yard line now. And Dutch Call has the play, lines his offense up. Bogart is still the single back in the backfield. Marsh and Jacobs split out wide. JoJo Clark in the game now as well. And Bogardis once again with the carry, lowering a shoulder and willing himself to make uh, no something out of nothing. Stopped by number seven on the play for the Coyotes. Get it three yards on the play. Matthew Rising? He's on my roster as Matthew Okay, Rising. thank you. Thank you, Matthew Rising. That's okay. Sorry, we didn't. Uh... All right. Second down. Bogardis once again on the carry, finds the lane, and he dives into the end zone for a Sabercats touchdown. Brian Bogardis from 17 yards. Yeah, I mean, that's the perfect start for Saguaro. Brian Bogardis gets the touch every single play on that drive. Goes to show what they're trying to do on senior night against a physical Campo Verde team. They're going to try and match it and be just as physical. Wow. Wow. Here we go, Michael Ortiz in to kick the extra point for the Sabercats. Snap is good, hold is down, and the kick is blocked on the edge, blocked by Borchard. So the Sabercats, with under 10 minutes remaining in the first quarter, behind the uh, running style of Brian Bogardis, are leading the Campo Verde Coyotes 6-0. We'll be back after the break. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Welcome back to the Sabercat Network here with the Varsity Sports Show. Vincent Ryan and uh, Michael Ortiz to kick off. Sailing into the end zone for the touchback. And it'll be first and 10 Coyotes on the 20 yard line. Vince, I'm curious to see what Campo Verde does today. Obviously they've played that physical running style throughout most of the year and it's worked pretty well for them but they've got to have a few tricks up their sleeve tonight against a defense that's going to be as talented as Saguaro. How early do they throw those out? How late do they throw them out? When do they throw them out? I think, I think there's going to be some out there today to keep them in the game. The quarterback for the Coyotes, number five, Riley Garcia, did a lot of off-season work with some quarterback gurus around town, and uh, he's a very talented kid. Got a penalty marker down. And you've actually had a chance to see Garcia play firsthand this year. What are your impressions? Ball, the ball can fly out of his hand at times. It's really nice. Um, he's not really aided as much by an offensive line that hasn't had as much success until recently. And the receivers, the receivers struggle a little bit. 
he can make some tough throws that the Sabercats defense are going to have to be really aware of out there, for sure. Here we go, first down and 15 after the five yard penalty brings the Coyotes back. Sabercats showing some pressure. Garcia back to pass, goes deep to Borchard and it's caught. Pass is caught by Noah Borchard on the blanket coverage of Deshaun Hinton. Yeah, and Hinton a little frustrated with the fact that that didn't go his way. He, he kind of got lost out there as well. The blanketed coverage came at the end, but he was lost at the beginning, and it allowed Borchard to get wide open, and that's the type of throw we said he can make. He can deliver a good throw from time to time. Coyotes have it first and 10 on the Sabercat 46-yard line. Riley Garcia, single back in the backfield, three by one set. Garcia waits the snap. And the give to 44, Connor Calloway finds a lane right up the middle, cuts it back to the outside, finally forced out of bounds by Thomas DeCesaro, but not before getting another Coyotes first down. It'll be first and 10 on about the 12 yard line. Excuse me, call it the 17. Yeah, two big gains against Cam Coach Camarillo's black shirts defense so far, and that's not what you want to see. Obviously, they're trying to play a little bit of a four man front, thinking they can win the battle up there. And Campo Verde's just moving right through them. Coyotes coming up with a two by two set. Callaway in the backfield. Garcia, the quarterback. Sabercats bring an edge pressure. Tristan Monday trips up Garcia for the sack. Big time momentum stopper there for Tristan as we have a little guy coming to run into the uh, booth here. <laughs> Loss of 12, Monday is just so athletic and, and was going down, falling, and dove and just swung his arm and tripped uh, Garcia up to get credit for that sack. Yeah, heady play from him. Second and 22 for the Coyotes. Give once again to Callaway, tripped up and keeps his feet Gets a few yards back. And it'll be third down and 12. Tough to stop, he's a big time, he's a big kid for a running back. Almost built like a tight end back there. Maybe a little bit undersized to be a tight end, but the point still stands. He's, he's just really tough to bring down in that kind of scenario. But third and long nonetheless for the, cat, or for the offense. Sabercats have had a lot of success on third and long situations here with that edge pressure on the defense led by Tristan Monday. Garcia back to pass, scrambling, trying to evade the rush and gets sacked again. Sacked that time, the pressure came right up the middle from 42, Zach Macaroli. Yet good pressure initially from the Sabercats, forced Riley Garcia back in the pocket, and then that late pressure from the linebacking core of Mackie Aroli, led by Mackie Aroli, gets in there and forces it. It'll be a long one here, not quite punt range, not quite field goal range, so the offense has to stay out there, Vince. Fourth down, and 25. Ball is on the Sabercat 32-yard line. Garcia back to pass. Garcia searching, completes it. Trying to evade some tacklers, finally tackled is number eight. And that is Jersey, excuse me, Rob Bertola. And on the change of possession, Sawara will have it back first and 10. Yeah, good job by the defense to recover after two big gash plays were given up and now they move now they get the ball, now they give their offense the ball back and Ridge Duchikal will come out with Jaden Matthews, not Brian Begardas this time. Matthews will uh, likely be the lone setback in the backfield as it appears Janias Marsh and Javen Jacobs split out wide. And to the other side, Chris Nimcheski, the single isolated receiver. Duchikal sends Jacobs in motion, split backs. And the give to Jacobs, right up the middle and brought down on the play by number 37. Get it one yard on the play. 
That was Colby Fredstrup Adkins. Heck of a name, that. He'll be an attorney one day. He's got uh, the perfect <laughs> name for it. Here we go. On second down, gain of one on the play. Dutchikal, shotgun formation. Receiver split out wide. Dutchikal. The toss to Matthews completes it. Matthews breaking free, finally dragged down. And Bertola in on the stop. Good form tackle to deny Jaden Matthews any opportunity to get yards after the catch. And they now have seven yards to go, the Sabercats, that is. Um, maybe something to Javen Jacobs out in the flat, give him some space to run and roam. I could see that. Well, you've got JoJo Clark in the game, split out wide. Chris Nimcheski, three receivers to one side. Janias Marsh, single receiver down below. Matthews in motion. Dutchikal scrambling and goes down, brought down on the play by 37. Once again, that is Fredstrup Adkins. On fourth down, the Sabercats bring in their punting unit. Michael Ortiz to punt. Deep to receive for the Coyotes, number eight, Rob Bertola. Let's see if let's see if Campo Verde can come away with a little better field position this time. Excuse around. me, Boston Williamson deep to receive. Ortiz's punt very high, a lot of hang time. And takes a Sabercat bounce and roll and finally downed inside the 30-yard line. Coyotes will have it first and 10 on the 29. Both teams so far trying to establish the running game early at least. Saguaro having a little, had a, had a lot of success on the first drive. Even Campo had success on their first drive. It was when they started to try and throw the football a little bit more that they, they started moving backwards and the chains started to get farther and farther away from them. See if they go back to the line, to go back to that run game up the middle. The Sabercats pressing their coverage and uh, on first down, Garcia, shotgun formation, the give to Callaway. Callaway. Juke scrambles, finally brought down, just past the line of scrimmage, gain of three, and credited with the stop will be 72, C.J. Ballard. Substitutions now for the Coyotes. On second down, it'll be second and seven. Clock continues to run, 4.35 remaining in the opening period. Sabercats starting to plug more in the box on this second drive. Receiver in motion for the Coyotes. Garcia underthrows it slightly. And DeCesaro makes sure that ball is not caught. Pass is incomplete. It'll be third down and seven. And Campo responds with Saguaro flooding the box by trying to go on the outside, but Thomas DeCesaro, one of the smarter players out there on the field, I'm sure, as all 11, I'm sure, is smart. But Thomas DeCesaro, wise to it. Gets to the outside, finds the guy at the numbers, doesn't allow it, as you said, Vince. Big third down play here. Coyotes having some success moving the ball down the field in the previous drive, and now on third and seven. Riley Garcia, JoJo Clark showing pressure on the outside. And Monday, ball is thrown and caught right along the sideline, pass is complete. To 23. Sabercats go with zone on that one, and the uh, receiver just finds the gap in that zone, makes the play. Camarillo, Coach Camarillo, going with a little more zone than we've seen in the last couple of weeks. Maybe that was a recent development that they saw that would help them in the run game. Mason Shea with the reception there and uh, giving the Coyotes another first and 10. The ball will be spotted right near midfield on their own 49 yard line. New running back checking into the game, 31, Alan Ferber. And on the toss, on the carry, 29, Jace Makovic. McGavick, excuse me. McGavick was the starting running back up until a couple weeks ago for this Campo team. Now they've used him a little bit more in the slot, as you've seen there. They like to get him involved in, in the short little flats. Official timeout now. We'll find out 
what the discussion is here. And Coyotes looking at a second down and 11 yards to go. And uh, the lead official speaking with athletic director Matt Harris of the Sabercats. Garcia, shotgun formation, back to pass. Cats showing pressure, going over the top, throws it out of bounds. Garcia's pass attempt is incomplete. And it'll be third and 11. The issue where there were some TV monitors on the sideline that uh, the Sabercats utilize uh, when players come off the field and they were facing the field, so the official asked that they just simply be turned around. Huh. I wonder why. I don't know if you would know. I wonder why the TVs have to be facing inward and not towards well, the Well, I think it just could have, the way they were set up, it could have been a, a, an error, and uh, normally they are facing, yeah. What, what was that? Too close. I think oh, was oh they were too, too close. close. Here we go, Garcia field. back to pass. Garcia to Williamson. Williamson driven out of bounds and in on the stop, Hinton. He flings the football with ease, doesn't he? He just li likes a little toss-up. That reminds me a little bit of J.D. Johnson, the quarterback from Pinnacle a couple years ago. That okay. ball just kind of, it just always looked like it was just gliding off his hand every time he threw it. Jacobs deep to receive the punt. On fourth and eight. Good snap. Nice punt again. Great hang time. Takes a roll right out of bounds. That'll roll out about the six yard line. So the Coyotes doing a good job of, of pinning the Sabercats back. Yeah, winning that field position battle is gonna be really crucial for Campo Verde United team. Like we've said all night so far, they like to play physical, they like to play defense. And when you have field position, it helps your defense so, so much. The quarterback now for the Sabercats, number four, Devin Dampier. Jaden Matthews, the single back. Three by one set for Sawaro. Dampier with the snap to Matthews. Matthews into the open field along the right sideline, and he's off and running, folks. Going, going, gone. Touchdown, Sabercats. Jaden Matthews with a 94 yard touchdown run. Wow. Jaden Matthews flashes almost some 100 meter dash speed, and I think you have to credit Jason Mons there a little bit. He throws Devin Dampier in right at the goal line, adds that little dimension that the defense has to think about on the run game, and it, just for that split second, the defense thinks Dampier has it. Matthews has a hole, and he's not going to look back once he has that whole 94-yard touchdown. Ryan, it's plays like that that make us great broadcasters. <laughs> <laughs> That is uh, an amazing, amazing display of speed by Jaden Matthews along that right sideline, considering he had defenders chasing him. And he broke open, broke free. Ortiz in to kick the extra point. Snap is down, kick is up, and it's good. The Sabercats now lead the Coyotes with two minutes and 41 seconds remaining in the first quarter, 13-0. Thank you for joining us on the Sabercat Network. We will be right back. Training Better Athletes was founded by renowned football coach Ron Sowers with the philosophy of training well-rounded young people in mind and body. TBA is the go-to for middle schoolers through the pros. Coach Sowers has worked with all sports but specializes in football offensive and defensive line skills training. Whether it's one-on-one -on -one or group training, reach out to Coach Sowers at trainingbetterathletes.com or call him at 602-435-9064. You can't cheat the grind. Welcome back to the Sabercat Network on the Varsity Sports Show. Vincent Ryan here. And uh, coming down to the near the end of the first quarter, the Sabercats with a 13-0 lead over the Campo Verde Coyotes. Michael Ortiz in to kick it off. Ortiz's kick, another great kick sails into the end zone. And it'll be a touchback, lands in the hands of uh, Borchard. 
Coyotes will have it first and 10 on their own 20. And I'm sorry, just to go back to that run play, I'm over here looking at the TVs and the offensive line was getting their talk and it was really brief. It, coach just went around and high-fived all his old linemen, said great job, 97-yard touchdown, 94-yard touchdown run, get back to work. Wow. Riley Garcia checks back into the game for the quarterback uh, position for Campo Verde. Offense comes up, line of scrimmage, and receivers will be split out wide. Defense once again, secondary showing a little bit of press with the corners. Split backs in the backfield. Garcia, the quick give inside. Trying to get a lane outside on the play. 31, Ethan Ferber. And a gain of about two on the play. It'll be, or a gain of one. It'll be second and nine. <laughs> Nice little gain there, or not sorry, nice little job out there by Tristan Monday, who's known as a pass rusher, but obviously versatile enough to get out there and stop the run as well. Second down and nine. Riley Garcia surveys the defense, awaits the snap. Some movement up front, not called, and uh, that pass looks like it'll be incomplete. Looked to be some movement up front, but official didn't uh, stop the play. Yeah, I think even Riley Garcia knew there was movement. He almost hesitated with the throw, just kind of dumped it down to a guy who wasn't even close to being open, only a yard away from the line of scrimmage. Probably didn't seem like there was much hope with that one anyway. It'll be third and nine now for the Coyotes, and Tristan Monday checks back into the game. For Saguaro. Monday, the highly heralded defensive end outside linebacker headed to the University of Arizona next year. Three receivers split out wide for the Coyotes. Garcia back to pass, evading defenders. Garcia tosses it over the top and overthrows the intended receiver, Hinton, on the coverage of Williamson, it'll be fourth down and the Coyotes send in their punting unit. Yeah, textbook defensive stand there for the Sabercats after the big touchdown run, you get a three and out and you, you give your offense a chance with another perfect field position opportunity. Javen Jacobs back to receive. We've already seen what he can do tonight. Jacobs lined up on his own 40 yard line awaiting that punt. As the Coyote punt unit gets settled, get all their personnel out. Meanwhile, the play clock continues to move and they get the snap off. And that ball will get down to about the 41 yard line of the Sabercats. So that's where Saguaro will take over on first and 10. We'll see who the quarterback is on this series. I would expect it to be Dutchikal, but I mean, last time we saw the extra element that Dampier can bring in the run game, and he's not he's an adequate thrower enough, but Ridge Dutchikal with with good field position, minute 37 to go in the quarter, he probably comes out, and it looks like it is going to be Dampier, so scratch everything I just yeah, he said. He literally had one play on the last series, but it's awful nice when, you know, when defensers are keying on you, Ryan, and you are the decoy on that particular play and your running back goes for a touchdown. Empty backfield now, five receivers split out wide for the Sabercats. Dampier, back to pass. Dampier, on the little hitch route, finds Bogardis who drops his shoulder and is stopped by Bertola. Yeah, Bogardis tried to drop that shoulder and throw a stiff arm, but couldn't quite win the battle there. Nice little check down though, get some confidence going in your quarterback, Devin Dampier, who, um, He's been pretty effective when he's gotten in, but mostly through the ground game, not as much through the air. So key to build that. Gain of six on the play, second down and four. Bogardis in the backfield now, two by two set. Dampier awaits the snap. Sends Jacobs in motion. Keeps it. Dampier juking, scrambling, and gets the first down. I love the sock combination there with Dampier. Yeah, I, I saw that pregame. Are, are we, is that legal? 
Can you do uh, that? Apparently it is, but that <laughs> only that happens to me when I dress in the dark. Ah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You think he had the same issue? Or no, you think he did I that doubt it. I think he did it on purpose. Very Stylish. It's a fashion statement. Here yeah, we yeah. go. First down, Sabercats. Dampier, Bogardis in motion. Dampier loses the snap, picks it up, runs with it, and gains a, a respectable run on a, a, what was essentially a broken play. Nice, yeah, yeah, like you said, nice little ad lib. I don't know if Ridge Duchikal can quite do that. Now that might be underselling Ridge Duchikal's athleticism. He is a very underrated athlete, but Devin Dampier is just that next level above him. And I think part of the reason there was a lot going on in that play, a couple guys out wide, motion for the running back. He didn't quite know where he wanted to go with the play early on, but he makes a good play out of it in the end. Looks like we're going to have a timeout. Oh, no, that's the end of the quarter. Sorry, folks. So end of the first, and the Sabercats lead the Campo Verde Coyotes. 13-0, we'll be back for quarter number two. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show. Our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating a platform to promote young people in extracurricular activities and community outreach. If you are interested in partnering up with the Varsity Sports Show, find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or call or text us at 480-779-9437. The Varsity Sports Show that ball is a fumble you took it you tucked it away and you ran arizona's home for youth high school college and you welcome back folks to quarter number two sabercats on senior night scoring two touchdowns in the first quarter and they lead the coyotes of campo verde 13-0 Quarterback on this drive, on this series, is number four, Devin Dampier. Brian Bogardis, the single back in the backfield. Two by two set for the Sabercats. Is it ever shortened to Coyotes or is it always Coyotes? Coyotes. Always the Coyotes. The Coyotes, yes. Coyotes show pressure. And Jacobs in motion. The ball handed off to Bogardis, really near the first down here. Great plays, about a yard shy, where it'll be third and one. Yeah, good run by Bogardis there. Again, lowering that shoulder, running angry. It's a nice little contrast to what you just saw. I mean, a couple weeks ago throughout the season, I've compared him to Thunder and Lightning from those USC days, and I think that it's, it's a cliche comparison, but it might just be the perfect comparison with Bogardis and Matthews. Janias Marsh in the game at receiver as well. JJ, uh, uh, Jojo Clark. And it looks like we'll have a timeout called by the Sabercats. We're gonna keep it here. Uh, what I wanted to do, Ryan, is, is ask you, so you attended, you were a, uh, a student at Pinnacle High School where Devin Dampier attended high school as well before he transferred to Saguaro. What kind of an athlete was he at uh, Pinnacle? What do you remember about Devin Dampier? Um, we played, he played, the year I was there, he was a freshman, and then I think as well as a sophomore year, but uh, he played football his freshman year. He made a couple appearances in the varsity season. That was the year that uh, J.D. Johnson had a, had a little bit of an issue towards the end of the year with his heart, and uh, sadly he's no longer able to play football because of that, but he got in late on in the year because of that. He showed some flashes of D1 potentially. He's a great athlete. That's what they used him as most his freshman. He played basketball as well, so you know he's got that athleticism in him. And then that the, the year after, last year at, at Pinnacle, he just he flashed a different sort of potential with the arm, and he showed that he can be a quarterback at the Division One level and not just an athlete at the Division One level, which I love to see. Well, he's really taken to this system and this offense. You know, sitting out the first five games, you got to kind of watch in games, but you get to participate in practice, and... Uh, he was inserted in, first game started off a, a little slow, uh, but uh, he's really taken to it and has become a key part of this offense. Jacobs in motion. The give to Bogardis. Bogardis finds a lane right up the middle, drops his arm, stiff arm, and uh, gets gains a few more on the play before finally being tackled by number four, Nate Gomez, with a first down. Yeah, good run by Bogardis again, set up by that dual threat opportunity of Dampier. And I think it's a it's a it's a it's a comparison that's going to be used a lot across the valley right now because of what Kyler Murray is doing with the Cardinals. And Devin Dampier being an undersized athletic quarterback certainly fits the bill of that comparison. But there's a lot of similarities to the way he throws the football, where he creates opportunities for his running back through his own motion. And there's a timeout on the play or a sideline warning. 
Well, Dampier's listed at six foot two hundred pounds, so relatively speaking, compared to quarterbacks that are six three, six four, he may appear to be undersized, but he's still a very good size athlete and uh, and moves extremely well. Yeah, he does. I, yeah, he he certainly does, and I think that size difference, sort of or that size difference, that that what that six foot size helps him a lot of ways with how slippery and elusive he can be. Dampier awaits the snap. Drops back to pass, right across the middle. Quick strike. JoJo Clark just escapes his fingertips. Pass incomplete. That was a good throw. I don't think JoJo Clark wanted the contact in there. I thought it was coming. He sort of chicken-armed yeah. it out. T-Rex armed it out of there at the end. Devin Dampier seemed a little frustrated. Here we go. And uh, Monday comes out. DeCesaro in for the Sabercats. We had a penalty called. Holding against Saguaro, so that'll bring it back where it'll be first down and 24 on the 30-yard line. Play being signaled into Dampier. Three receivers split out to one side for the Sabercats. Jaden Matthews, the lone back. Matthews in motion. Matthews, quick strike pass, completed along the sideline, finally pulled out of bounds. In on the stop for the Coyotes, 22, Austin Earl. Yeah, and they're trying to get it outside, like we mentioned in the pregame. Campo pretty good in that front seven, but once you get into the secondary, they probably have an athletic disadvantage out there, so maybe getting it out to the numbers and trying to chase the game out there is probably where Saguaro's going to find the most success. But that being said, they've scored two rushing touchdowns being physical in the trenches, so they're probably dominant on all phases of that offensive side. Gain of six on the previous play, second down and 18. Dampier back to pass. Dampier lobs it low to JoJo Clark. Gains a few more along the edge, and uh, looks like it'll be about a gain of three, so we'll have... Third down and 15. Excuse me. Eight. Third down and eight, sorry. I was looking at the 15 yard line when I said that and that's where the ball will be spotted just inside. Third and eight. Dampier awaits the snap, sends Matthews in motion, Dampier on the draw. Devin on the gains a couple more on the play where it'll be fourth down. Now, the the, begs the question, do you bring in Michael Ortiz to attempt the field goal, which would be a kind of sort of chip shot within his range on the left hash, or do you go for it? I think I would bring him out, but it looks like they're gonna keep Dampier out there and maybe give him a chance to display the arm. Brian Bogardis will come in for uh, Jaden Matthews. He's a little bit better of a blocking running back on this fourth and six scenario. Three at the bottom of your screen, so that should certainly yield what they might try and do. Three by one set, Dampier sprints out to his right, looking for a receiver, finds one, and it's Chris Nimcheski. Gets down really close to that goal line. The one yard line goes out of bounds and it'll be first and goal on the one. Yeah, so they bring Bogardus in to block. They move left initially, but then they go towards Bogardus' side. He gets a nice little block off and Dampier throws one on the money to Chris Nimcheski who, is he got, did he get a lot of minutes last time? Did he get a lot of snaps last week against Horizon? Because I haven't noticed yeah, it before. Yeah, Nimcheski gets a lot of snaps. He's that receiver that you isolate outside. He's that big body. But uh, he 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 doesn't uh, you know he doesn't get a lot of balls Somewhat thrown of his way. Yeah, yeah. So he might get one two catches a game, but he's very capable and very good when he does get those catches. Wow. And on the direct snap, Jacobs, and he is stopped just shy of the goal line inside the one. I think it was JoJo. Oh, actually. correction. I there was an eight there. It was JoJo Clark. Yes. They tend to use both, though, so I, I don't blame you. I think I, I would have thought Javon Jacobs would have been out there, too. Once again, direct snap, right side. And that time, Clark is in for the Sabercat touchdown. 
Three different runners have scored so far, which again, we'll keep saying it, they're trying to run the football against this team. They're saying we're more physical, we're gonna dominate you still. A couple weeks ago against Sierra Canyon, they tried to win on the outside. They said they could do it that way. This week, they're saying they can do it this way. Multi-dimensional offense. Michael Ortiz in to attempt the extra point. Snap is good, hold is good, kick is up, and it's good. And the Sabercats with 8.55 remaining in the second quarter lead the Coyotes 20 to zero. We'll be back. 24th Street Dental Biltmore is the place to go for cosmetic dentistry and Invisalign. Doctors Braden, Turner, and the team are ready to put your dental needs first. They are the Valley's Invisalign experts. Schedule a free exam today and mention the Varsity Show for complimentary in-house whitening. From cleanings to more comprehensive dental, 24th Street Dental Biltmore in Phoenix is the first step toward a healthier smile. Located in the heart of the Biltmore, call or stop by 602-468-1135. Proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Welcome back, folks, to uh, Saguaro High School in Scottsdale and this 5A Santan region key matchup here featuring the visiting Campo Verde Coyotes and the home team, the Saguaro Sabercats. Michael Ortiz to kick off after the touchdown run by JoJo Clark. Ball bounces into the end zone. It'll be another touchback. Coyotes will have it first and 10 on their own 20. Ryan, you're... Uh, Head football coach Ryan Freeman, what are you doing on this drive here for Campo? I mean, you want to say keep playing the same way you are, and I think they should because I don't know if they have the athletes to quite compete outside. You've had your most success running the football. When they've tried to throw it, they haven't had as much success. So maybe just try and get the ball to Callaway, get Jason McGavick involved a little bit more, and see if you can try your own thunder and lightning little pairing with those two back there. And here we go. Riley Garcia lines his team up. Receiver split out wide. Garcia back to pass. Comes underneath and it's tipped away by DeCesaro, passing complete. Prime example there all the time in the world to throw that great job by the O-line, but Thomas DeCesaro and the entire defensive secondary all over the receivers, nowhere to go with the passing game. And we heard that all along, uh, the praise that, uh, that Coach Mons uh, talks about this Campo Verde offensive line is being very very skilled very capable of giving their quarterback a lot of time and uh and it's just a matter of allowing the receivers to get open and on second down the give inside running into a wall of saber cats Ferber on the carry. Third and eight now for Campo Verde. Tristan Monday. This seems to be his favorite sound, <laughs> that the loud uh, gong on third down, and that's uh, he makes a lot of great plays on, on most downs, but third downs uh, he seems to have excelled. It's go time for him. Here we go. Garcia back to pass. Garcia. Finding the receiver in the flat. Pass is completed to 29, McGavick. And it's going to bring up fourth down and long, fourth and five, which will force the Coyotes to punt. Jacobs finding his familiar spot about midfield. Yeah, that low throw was never going to quite give his receiver a chance from Riley Garcia. And Javen Jacobs being... Standing at midfield for most of the year on punt returns is great credit to the defense for Sawara. Nearly blocked on that play. And Jacobs wrapped up and finally dragged down. And on the tackle was Austin Earl. Sabercats will have good field position even without uh, Javen really being able to return that football. It'll be right on the 41. I feel like that's got to be the first time he's lost yardage on a return all year. He only And he only lost two or three at that. Seven nineteen remaining till half. Cole Goodwin, third quarterback in the first half already. Oh, okay. But he's lined up out wide? Never mind. Yeah, Goodwin lined up as a receiver. 
for the Sabercats. Rich Dutch a call back in at quarterback. Shotgun formation, Brian Bogardis in the backfield. Dutch a call. Quick strike to Jacobs, completes it, where he's brought down by Bertola. Seven yards on that reception. It'll be second down and three. Join us at halftime, folks. We are going to be joined by the um, a very talented gentleman here who teaches here. He's part of the faculty at Saguaro High School, Mr. Tim McCandless. We'll tell you a little bit more about him at halftime and leads a, 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 a group of students uh, with some different projects, and we'll also run some, some uh, samples of his work. Dutch a call, awaiting the snap. Back to pass. Dutch a call wants to go deep, does right in the middle, and pass is underthrown to Marsh, but also tipped in the process by Zach Goble. It also didn't look like Ridge put as much on as he possibly could have as he really underthrew Janias, and I feel like that might have been more of a route issue. I think Janias might have just gotten too deep in his route. Because it didn't look like Ridge yeah. wanted to throw it as hard no, as he could. No, no, and we've seen him throw. He can throw. Idaho's getting a good one. Idaho's gotten a, good, a few good ones before him, too, yeah. as well. Third down and three now for the Sabercats. Two backs in the backfield. Jacobs in motion on the reception. Turns it upfield. Nearly gets the first down. We'll see if he got the momentum there on the spot, and he did. It'll be first and 10 Sabercats. Yeah, you get your speed guy out in the flat, and he makes plays for you, gets the first down. He'll, Cole, Cole Goodwin's still hanging out there. Looks like he might go under center now. Nope, he'll go to the left side. I want Cole Goodwin under center and Ridge out wide. I want to see them try it. <laughs> Cole Goodwin. Lined up out wide, three by one set. JoJo Clark, the tight end. Dutch a call out to Jacobs. Jacobs turns it upfield and is stopped shy of the first down by Borchard. Six yard gain on the play. Good tackle by Borchard, the linebacker who's been pretty solid all over the field on the defensive side. Well, he made a couple plays on the offensive side too. He seems to be one of the glue guys for this Camp Verde team. Empty backfield now for the Sabercats. Dutch a call, awaits the snap, three by two set. Little snap, Dutch a call picks it up, is able to complete it to Marsh. And it's a first down for the Sabercats. That play, again, is another one of those plays that could have gone either way. It was a low snap, picked it up off the ground, and quick release, was able to get it to Marsh. And I think what we're seeing is Raul Aguilar's return to action after a couple weeks out. He missed Sierra Canyon. He missed Horizon. He's the normal starting center. He had been for the first half of the year. A couple games out in that center spot can really get you, yeah, get you rusty rust pretty early. Yeah. yeah, the center position is the one position where you're touching the ball every single play. The give to Bogardis. Bogardis running with reckless abandon. Gets his team another first down. Borchard on the tackle. Good strong run from Thunder there and uh, inside the 20. It's good blocking as well up front. They just run behind Leo Tui Tu on that right guard spot. Coming up on five minutes remaining till half. Sabercats taking their time, lining up. Good clock management here. Two by two set, single back in the backfield. Matthews in motion, Dutch a call. On the screenplay, finds Marsh. Marsh running behind his line and finally brought down on the play by 34, Jonas Vicini. I think this is a good, top, a good spot, sorry, to take a shot in the end zone here. Second and three, you're gonna have a short third down opportunity if you don't complete it. Maybe put one into the back of the end zone towards the corners if you're Rich Dutchikal. Marsh and Jacobs lined up on the left. Nimchewski, the isolated receiver on the right. Marsh in motion, 
Sprinting out to his left is Dutchikal. Throws to his left to Marsh. Who's in for a Sabercat touchdown? Wow. Janias Marsh beats him on the outside, makes a great play, and that's the th that's what we were talking about. Those two on the outside together, you probably knew it was coming there. You've talked about Nimcheski already tonight, Vince, and how he, he often gets put out there on an island alone as a decoy. He serves his purpose there. 26-0 Sabercats. We talk about the great quarterbacks, not just good ones, but great ones have the ability to that are right-handed, that can sprint out to their left and throw across their body to their left. Those are, are great quarterbacks. Not everybody can do that. Snap is good. Kick is up and good. Ortiz's kick puts the Sabercats up 27-0 with under four minutes remaining till half on the Sabercat Network, Varsity Sports Show. Vince and Ryan will be back. Are you unable to do the things you love? Do you know your daily habits could be better to enhance your quality of life? Are you suffering with chronic pain or chronic illness and can't find the right solution that works for you? Fix Body Group was created so you have a team of professionals to help you achieve your health goals and get you back to doing what you love again. In Scottsdale, go to FixBodyGroup.com or call 480-795-5329. Fix Body Group, proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show and Fitness Minute with Tyler Mayer. Welcome back, folks, here. Uh Ortiz getting ready to kick off, and make sure you stick around through halftime. We're going to be joined by Mr. Tim McCandless. Does a lot of great things on faculty here, and uh, we're excited to have him. Michael Ortiz's kick, another booming kick, just shy of the end zone. This one is returnable by Borchard, who is stopped right about the 17-yard line where the Coyotes will have it first and 10. Can Riley Garcia's arm show up and give him a score before the half before the half mark is the big question on this drive. They've tried to run the football. They've been very ineffective since those first couple of plays. If Riley can get that passing game going, it might even open that run game up a little bit. Coyotes will have it first and 10 on the 17. Split backs in the backfield, two receivers on the bottom of your screen. Garcia, the quick give to McGavick inside, who's stopped right about the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Oh, they did give him credit for one yard gain there. So it is second and nine. Two by two set. Correction, two by one set, two backs in the backfield. Sabercats showing some pressure along the edge. Garcia escapes, looks to throw, can't, and instead tucks it away, and we'll get a couple more on the keeper. Great pocket presence from Riley Garcia to sense the charge of Ivan Martin. He steps up in the pocket, gets a few yards, third and medium from six yards out, as you said, and they will call timeout. We'll take the time out as well with 3.01 remaining in the second quarter. We'll be back. Hey guys, Vince here to talk to you about a good friend of mine named Bob Jenkins. Bob is a Marine Corps veteran. Bob and his younger brother DJ own Vets Built Contracting. For five years, they've been hiring and putting veterans to work. Vets Built is licensed, bonded, and insured, both residential and commercial, specializing in renovations, remodeling, new build, casitas, safe rooms, or small commercial TI work. If you're a skilled veteran looking for work, a homeowner in need of work, or a commercial business needing TI work, please call Bob or DJ at Vets Built at 480-584-3675. Late in the second quarter now, Saguaro leading Campo Verde 27 to zero. Campo Verde trying to keep themselves in this football game, and I know it's uh, it's not panic mode yet, Ryan, but uh, you're down what is essentially four scores. You've got to do something on this drive. Yeah, third and six, they need a chance to create, and they've probably got to do it through the arm of Riley Garcia, even though they haven't had much success with that so far. Garcia back to pass. Nearly intercepted. And the defender on the play, 
Number 28, Ivan Martin. So on fourth down, the Coyotes have to punt. Javen Jacobs around the 50 yard line again, like clockwork. You know, it's, it's, it's a matter of time with the talent on that punt return and, and lining up midfield. It's not a very good combination, at least for the opposing team. Why does he keep lining? This guy's over punting him almost every time. It's a great punt again. Jacobs pulled down from behind there. And on the tackle, 18. That's Gavin Parks. So we'll see who the quarterback is here for Saguaro on this drive. When do you think Louis Ramirez starts to tell Javon Jacobs to line up a little further back? The, the punter's better than your average uh, average high school punter for Campo, clearly. Although he made a mistake last week. <laughs> I know you weren't here, but he punted it into his own end zone for a, t for a safety last week. Oh, boy. Yeah, he felt he had a lot. It was actually kind of a smart decision. He was uh, His punt was going to get blocked in the end zone, so they were um, so it would have been six, and he decided I'll just turn around and punt it back through my own end zone. Okay. It was worth it. It would only count it for two. So Dutchikal is the quarterback. Jaden Matthews in the backfield. I know everyone in the booth at Campo last week was really confused at what happened. Dutchikal back to pass, scrambles, decides to keep it, and wisely steps out of bounds, evading a couple of defenders. For a nice little gain, looks like it'll be a four yard gain. Second down and six. 2.43 remaining till half. We are going to be joined by Mr. Tim McCandless at halftime, and he's actually sitting right next to me. Tim, wait till you hear this intro that uh, uh, Matt Harris, the AD, sent me about you. So, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. The quick give inside to Jaden Matthews. And uh, he got back to the line of scrimmage. So it'll be third and five now for Saguaro. call lines his offense up. DeCesaro in the ball game along with uh, Javen Jacobs. Jacobs in motion. call back to pass. Scrambles. Gets the pass off and it's Thrown, looked like it was thrown behind Jacobs. It's incomplete. It'll be fourth down and five. Punt unit checks in with 156 remaining till half. Yeah, finally, a, a rare defensive stand from Campo Verde. And I wasn't here last week for Horizon. I was here for Maricopa the week before. That might be the first punt I've seen from a Saber, from the Sabercat team in, in over a game and a, a game and a half. Yeah, yeah. Which is it's a, just a testament to the offensive ability. Uh, it is amazing. And, and the faith that you have in your offense when it's fourth down and you can, you can go for it and, co and be confident in going for it repeatedly. Michael Ortiz to punt. Good punt. Nice high kick, good ham hang time, and Williamson, no return on the play. May have gotten a yard on the return, and it'll be first and 10 on their own 20 yard line with 145 remaining till half. I want to see him take one shot. I just want to see Riley Garcia get a lot of time in the pocket, get some deep receivers that get open, and just give him a chance to get a 25, 30, 45 yard gain. Well, they have to do it here uh, <laughs> on this drive. And with uh, two backs in the backfield, receivers split out wide. Talented receiving core for this Coyote team. The give inside, and on the carry. Is McGavick. Excuse me, Ferber on the carry.
good friend of mine is the athletic director at Campo Verde High School, and when he was the football coach a few years back, they ordered these new jerseys, and, and I was the PA announcer there. <laughs> you couldn't see the numbers in front because they were so small. So, Max, thank you for this. Garcia back to pass. Completes the pass. Well, the pass is actually dropped by the receiver. And the, rec the intended receiver on the play, number six, Jersey Blazing game. Is that how you say it? Yes. Blazing game? Blazing game, yes. Huh. Yep, said his name uh, for two years as the PA announcer there. Great community at Campo Verde, a lot of fun. And, uh, and it's great to see uh, Coach Ryan Freeman uh, picking things up and uh, where uh, Max Ragsdale, the prior head coach now AD, is, has left them, left them off. Garcia, and the give inside to Callaway. Callaway does just enough. Looks like he'll get the spot for the first down. That play is good enough for a Coyotes first down. A little bit angrier of a run. They get that first down, 50 seconds to go. The clock now moves, but when's that shot going to come? You're, the clock is rolling. You're only going to go so far running the football. Yeah, it's uh, clock continues to move here. 40 seconds remaining till half, and it looks like we've got to stop and play here. It'll be a timeout called by the Coyotes. We'll take the timeout as well. Sabercats lead Campo Verde 27-0. We'll be back. Coming this winter to the Varsity Sports Show, AIA, high school, basketball, soccer, and wrestling. Attention, student athletes, parents, coaches, and administrators. We are contracted affiliates with NFHS. Tired of Pixelot? Our NFHS authorized platform can spotlight your favorite team with multi-camera and full broadcast crews. We still offer our YouTube channels as well. Single game, multi-game, and season coverage available to meet every budget, including a segment on the Varsity Sports Radio Show on AM 1060 K. US Arizona dedicated to your team. We can even help promote your booster businesses. Act fast. The season is right around the corner. Welcome back here, folks. Uh, in the final minute of the first half, 40 seconds remaining on the clock, Campo Verde first and 10 and having to make a quick decision here on uh, what they're going to do with these last 40 seconds, Ryan. Yeah, that was probably definitely, I mean, it definitely was what the timeout was for, but you got to take a shot at some point, and now that was the, pro the plan was probably to find out when you take that shot with four wide here. Garcia back to pass. Garcia gets a quick throw and completed to number two, Zach Goble, who steps out of bounds, wisely steps out of bounds, chews up six seconds uh, on that play. Not yet, but they teased it a little with the four wide, sending two guys deep, but it was always the check down from Riley Garcia. Second and two. Receiver split out wide for the Coyotes. Garcia sets up back to pass. Another short Garcia's pass, pass is but incomplete. is incomplete. It'll be third and two. That brings up third down for Campo Verde. As uh, Garcia gets the signal from the sideline. Callaway in the backfield. Garcia back to pass. Scrambles. Evading Monday. Finally gets it off. And that's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. 23 seconds remaining. I think you got to punt it away here. You can't take the risk of not getting it and giving Saguaro a chance with 20 seconds to go. And that's exactly what Coach Freeman will do. Into punt for the Coyotes. to Cesaro deep to receive this time. A little high snap. Good punt. Great hang time. A great punt. And to Cesaro opts to return it along the right sideline, takes it out of bounds with 13 seconds remaining. It's a great punt. I mean, I'm very impressed at the moment with that. Now we're just awaiting the Sabercat huddle on the sideline, the offensive huddle to break. And the quarterback this series will be Devin Dampier. 
So Coach Mons giving Dampier a, a series here to close out the first half. You can call it a series. It's 13 seconds of football, but it is technically a series. It's an eternity. And uh, the officials stop off the play. Campo Verde will take the timeout. We'll take another quick timeout. Folks, we will be back. Stay with us. Hey fans, the Arizona AIA High School Football Playoffs are coming. Trust the Varsity Sports Show team to live stream your football playoff games on NFHS. We are an NFHS trusted partner and will spotlight your favorite team better than anyone, including a team segment on Saturday's Varsity Sports Radio Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. We are authorized to cover every round of the football playoffs, including championships. Call or text us to reserve your postseason broadcast and production crew. Time is running out fast. 480-779-9437. Welcome back, folks, and with 13 seconds remaining, Campo Verde had to take a timeout to talk about it defensively. Devin Dampier, the quarterback. Brian Bogardis, the set, single set back with uh, JoJo Clark in at tight end. Three receivers split out wide for the Sabercats. Something out in the flat again to Javen Jacobs, probably. Bogardis in motion. Dampier keeps it. Takes off, here he goes. And runs out of bounds, wisely runs out of bounds with five seconds remaining, but not before getting the first down and then some. Got a penalty marker on the field. And a flag is thrown. We see some offensive linemen milling around that area. We'll see if that is the call, and it is. Holding against the Sabercat offensive line. That'll frustrate a little Javen J, or sorry, Devin Dampier for that matter, gave them a great opportunity at the 50 yard line to take a shot and it's all gonna come right back. Probably just take a knee here, go up into the half. 27 up on Campo Verde. And that is what they're gonna do. And Dampier takes a knee. And that's the half folks. Leading 27 to zero on senior night, the Saguaro Sabercats up over the Campo Verde Coyotes. We'll be back after the break with Mr. Tim McCandless. Stay tuned. Okay. Hi, this is Dick Stockton. Join Vince and me on the Varsity Sports Show as we kick off the Summer Spotlight Series. Hi, this is the Director of Community Engagement for Hospice of the Valley, Lynn Sue Cooney. Hi, this is Darren Chapman with Tiger Mountain Foundation. Hi, kids. This is DJ Soul Man from the Funk Junkies. This is Raquel Gomez, Program Director of Ada Bay Outdoors. Hi, this is Avery from Teen Lifeline. Just want you to know that you're not alone. Hey, this is Leanne from the Humane Society of Marshall County in Benton, Kentucky. Hi, this is Darla Doss from the Benton Women's Club of Benton, Kentucky. Hi, this is Kelsey Dickerson, and I start my Saturday mornings the right way. Hi, this is Nicole Thompson, Executive Director at Harvest Compassion Center. Hi, I'm Kate Bemisterfer, the Director of Development and Communications for the Cosanti Foundation. Hi, this is Dana Bailey from Homeless Youth Connection. Hey, this is John Linton with the I Have a Name Project and Let's Be Better Humans. Hello, this is Coach Mike Ballard. And despite the obstacles we face, we all should live by the promise. Hey, this is Bob Jenkins from Marine Corps Law Enforcement Foundation. On behalf of the 15 amazing people featured throughout the summer, thank you for starting your Saturdays listening to the Varsity Sports Show Summer Spotlight Series on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona, Arizona's home for youth, high school, college, and you. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native, born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road, just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. 
Training Better Athletes was founded by renowned football coach Ron Sowers with the philosophy of training well-rounded young people in mind and body. TBA is the go-to for middle schoolers through the pros. Coach Sowers has worked with all sports but specializes in football offensive and defensive line skills training. Whether it's one-on-one -on -one or group training, reach out to Coach Sowers at trainingbetterathletes.com or call him at 602-435-9064. You can't cheat the grind. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show. Our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating a platform to promote young people in extracurricular activities and community outreach. If you are interested in partnering up with the Varsity Sports Show, find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or call or text us at 480-779-9437. The Varsity Sports Show. That ball is a fumble. You took it, you tucked it away, and you ran. Arizona's home for youth, high school, college, and you. 24th Street Dental Biltmore is the place to go for cosmetic dentistry and Invisalign. Doctors Braden, Turner, and the team are ready to put your dental needs first. They are the Valley's Invisalign experts. Schedule a free exam today and mention the Varsity Show for complimentary in-house whitening. From cleanings to more comprehensive dental, 24th Street Dental Biltmore in Phoenix is the first step toward a healthier smile. Located in the heart of the Biltmore, call or stop by 602-468-1135. Proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Are you unable to do the things you love? Do you know your daily habits could be better to enhance your quality of life? Are you suffering with chronic pain or chronic illness and can't find the right solution that works for you? Fix Body Group was created so you have a team of professionals to help you achieve your health goals and get you back to doing what you love again. In Scottsdale, go to FixBodyGroup.com or call 480-795-5329. Fix Body Group, proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show and Fitness Minute with Tyler Mayer. Hey guys, Vince here to talk to you about a good friend of mine named Bob Jenkins. Bob is a Marine Corps veteran. Bob and his younger brother DJ own Vets Built Contracting. For five years, they've been hiring and putting veterans to work. Vets Built is licensed, bonded, and insured, both residential and commercial, specializing in renovations, remodeling, new build, casitas, safe rooms, or small commercial TI work. If you're a skilled veteran looking for work, a homeowner in need of work, or a commercial business needing TI work, please call Bob or DJ at Vets Built at 480-584-3675. Hi, this is Dick Stockton. Join Vince and me on the Varsity Sports Show as we kick off the Summer Spotlight Series. Hi, this is the Director of Community Engagement for Hospice of Valley, Lynn Sue Cooney. Hi, this is Darren Chapman with Tiger Mountain Foundation. Hi, kids. This is DJ Soul Man from the Funk Junkies. This is Raquel Gomez, Program Director of Otta Bay Outdoors. Hi, this is Avery from Teen Lifeline. Just want you to know that you're not alone. Hey, this is Leanne from the Humane Society of Marshall County in Benton, Kentucky. Hi, this is Darla Doss from the Benton Women's Club of Benton, Kentucky. Hi, this is Kelsey Dickerson, and I start my Saturday mornings the right way. Hi, this is Nicole Thompson, Executive Director at Harvest Compassion Center. Hi, I'm Kate Bemisterfer, the Director of Development and Communications for the Cosanti Foundation. Hi, this is Dana Bailey from Homeless Youth Connection. Hey, this is John Linton with the I Have a Name Project and Let's Be Better Humans. Hello, this is Coach Mike Valadez. And despite the obstacles we face, we all should live by the promise. Hey, this is Bob Jenkins from Marine Corps Law Enforcement Foundation. On behalf of the 15 amazing people featured throughout the summer, thank you for starting your Saturdays listening to the Varsity Sports Show Summer Spotlight Series on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. Arizona's home for youth, high school, college, and you.
Coming this winter to the Varsity Sports Show, AIA, high school, basketball, soccer, and wrestling. Attention student-athletes, parents, coaches, and administrators. We are contracted affiliates with NFHS. Tired of Pixelot? Our NFHS authorized platform can spotlight your favorite team with multi-camera and full broadcast crews. We still offer our YouTube channels as well. Single game, multi-game, and season coverage available to meet every budget, including a segment on the Varsity Sports Radio Show on AM 1060 K. US Arizona dedicated to your team. We can even help promote your booster businesses. Act fast. The season is right around the corner. Hey fans, the Arizona AIA high school football playoffs are coming. Trust the Varsity Sports Show team to live stream your football playoff games on NFHS. We are an NFHS trusted partner and will spotlight your favorite team better than anyone, including a team segment on Saturday's Varsity Sports Radio Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. We are authorized to cover every round of the football playoffs, including championships. Call or text us to reserve your postseason broadcast and production crew. Time is running out fast. 480-779-9437. Welcome back, and it's halftime here at uh, Scottsdale Saguaro High School at Senior Night, and uh, as you can see down on the field, the band is performing, doing an amazing job tonight. Um, we're, we're joined, i got to read this to you, Tim. So we're joined by Mr. Tim McCandless. Uh, Mr. McCandless is the head of the, the theater program here at Saguaro High School. This is from your athletic director who manages extracurriculars and the arts uh, on campus, all of the extra programs. His name is Matt Harris, and, and he said you have to read this at the beginning of your broadcast. I don't know if he wants you to cry or what, but <laughs> Tim McCandless is one of the most versatile and dedicated Saguaro staff members on our campus. He continuously provides amazing opportunities for our students to showcase their creativity and talent. Now, that came from Miss Ann Otziger from, you know, relayed through Matt Harris. Miss Ann Otziger is your principal. So that's high praise. I mean, I, I can't even half the time so, so much as get a wink and a hello from Miss A. You know, and I'm kidding. She's a great person. But, but that, that is big. Now, you obviously are very involved here on campus. I got to ask you a couple questions. First of all, how long have you been here? This is my fourth year at Saguaro. Okay, so yeah. to be here for four years into your fourth year and to get that kind of praise from the lead staff slash faculty member on campus from your principal to be noticed uh, you got to be you got to be involved in a lot of things uh, well it's a dream come true uh, uh ann oxker is the best boss i've ever had with the wow hands down. and i've been i've been in education since uh well actually since i graduated college i was an undergrad admissions counselor for a while and then okay um in really kind of the high school arena um career since 2013 um, so, yeah, she's by far the best principal I've ever uh, worked with. Matt Harris, best AD and, and oh, uh, hands down, assistant yeah. principal. Uh, uh, Dan Milligan and Katie Hansen. I mean, we've got just the best admin team, and they support the arts department to the nth degree. They'll go uh, – they're just – they love us we love them and i never want to as cheesy as it may sound i never want to leave here because it's just the perfect place well and i noticed that top to bottom it's a family atmosphere that's the only way i can describe it and and yeah. when i when we started when our crew started working with athletics last year it was with basketball lucas ramirez the head boys basketball coach who also does voiceover work yeah. for us sometimes so you listen <laughs> you'll hear him on saturday morning uh and and mr harris have just been so welcoming and uh and you know, and, and obviously we earn our keep, we work for it, but at the same time, they could it, it could go the other way where they don't give you the time of day and uh, and can be well justified in doing so, but they're the warmest people. They are. And, and yeah, very nice are. people. And the coaches. I mean, Joe Mickey, the baseball coach, has been amazing to work with. You know, obviously Jason Mons and, and you know, uh, on down the line, down to the kids. It filters down to the kids and the families. What is the most gratifying thing about your job? What do you love the most? Uh, the students, uh, hands down. Getting to work with the talented students uh, okay. we have. Uh, the pictures you're uh, seeing right now are from our current fall play, She Kills Monsters Young Adventures edition. And... Um, seeing some of the talent, I mean, <laughs> these are just stills taken from a couple days ago. And so if you look at the dedication on those students' faces, uh, they believe, they, they, they create these believable characters. Yeah. Um, their work ethic is second to none. Um, so the best part about my, to answer your question, yeah. it is the students. That is working with the best students I've ever worked with in my career. They're just, that is the, re- that's, that's just the best part of my job. 
So. So you are you're currently you've got a play that's running, mm -hmm. and yeah. tell us about the production of this play. How many students? How many hours went into preparing for this? We have just over uh, 40 cast members okay. and over 50 students total with crew members. Wow. Um, we've been rehearsing since well, this uh, we're going on two months. Uh, we auditioned late August, and then uh, we've been rehearsing ever since every day after school uh, for about three hours. Uh, here and there. Three we, hours after school. Yeah, I mean, oh boy. It, it, it's akin to athletic practices. You sure. Know, um, and that type, type of time commitment. But we also came in on Saturdays and uh, did some work with uh, the set and making sure the set and the technical aspects of the production are all set. Um, so it is a big commitment from the kids. But um, I know when I, when I make the cast list, I know who I'm casting. I know that not only are they right for the role, but they are going to be dedicated to rehearsal, and um, it is absolutely evident every day. Uh, so yeah. We're joined by the uh, the head of uh, the theater program here at Scottsdale Saguaro High School, Mr. Tim McCandless. And so, Tim, let's talk about the volunteers in addition to the kids that are cast. I mean, yeah. what, what are involved? Do you have a lot of parents that help? What, what is that like? Other faculty? Right, yeah. Um, our theater department has what's called the Swirl Creative Arts Theater Boosters uh, Program and Organization. And uh, our president is, uh, for this year, uh, is Leslie O'Shea, who's okay. actually a staff member uh, at the school. And um, But we have, yeah, the, the, the parent volunteers, they're always volunteering. They're always willing to help out. The past couple nights we've been performing the show, and they've been setting up the lobby. They run our, our box office. They run our concessions. Um, they'll... Uh, chaperone field trips for us. In fact, when we went to see Hamilton last month in um, uh, at ASU Camage earlier this month, rather, wow. um, I had a, <laughs> as you can imagine, I had a plethora of uh, volunteer opportunities. Sure, er, volunteers come forward to chaperone for that field trip. Yeah. Um, but it's not just that. You know, they'll volunteer for Arizona Thespian Festival coming up and and competitions. So yeah, I certainly couldn't do what we 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 could not do what we do uh, what we currently do without our parent volunteers. They're just phenomenal. Talk about the opportunities that this creates for the students that participate after their high school experience. Can you give us some examples of what students have gone on to do or or how they've blossomed as a result of participating in, in theater? Yeah, uh, great question. Uh, the, the life skills that are taught in theater are really, um, I don't know, they're, they're second to none in the sense that uh, acting really enhances your social skills. Let's say for interviewing, it's say for giving a social, like a presentation, a job presentation. Yeah. Um, so I know the theaters helped our kiddos in the sense of uh, uh, interviewing for colleges, you know, co scholarships, that sort of thing. Um, they've gone on to, um, you know, do uh, large performances for people, and they've had that experience already in high school. They know what this, what you know, maybe stage fright is, and how to use that stage fright to um, and those nervous energy yeah. to their advantage to perform really well. So, you know, and beyond that, academic skills it it really helps them, um, you know, with their reading and comprehension. I've seen, and I'm actually conducting research uh, on this right now, and uh, I've got all this literature to prove that it actually it, it works. So, um, yeah, so I, I, you know, it's a plug for theater. If you're, if you're ever involved in theater and you want to, you know, learn some new skills, um, conquer that stage fight or fear of public speaking, by golly, does this do that? So, okay, so mm -hmm. that was going to be my next question. So let's say I'm the parent of a, a, a new student here that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, freshman year, shy kid. What what can you tell me to, to you know you know what my my son my daughter is is maybe interested in in trying out but they're not really you know they're they're kind of in their own shell right now what sure. what can you tell me to to get get the get them to participate well if I put myself in shoes of a freshman uh, coming into high school I can speak from my own freshman experience I uh, d would not have even thought of coming to something like drama club or auditions for the fall play where I would think that, oh, no, I'm going to be up in the uh, front of everybody alone on stage in a spotlight. And golly, I've had uh, nightmares about this. Yeah. You know? And so we we avoid that by inviting every student first part of the year. And well, it's it's year round, but um, especially start of the year, freshmen, transfer students, we say, hey, come to drama club. Sure. Just learn about what we can do. It's not just acting. You can help us on the technical side of things. And um, we, we kind of ease them in that way. And then the more comfortable they get with the students uh, in the program, the more they're willing to kind of try some things. And I would also recommend taking acting classes, taking technical theater classes here at Saguaro. I teach all those. And um, I think I'm a good teacher. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not intimidating by any means. Um, so, yeah. you know, um, I'm very approachable. So if students have questions about, hey, how does this work, come talk to me, and I'd love to have you in my classes.
So. Amazing. So uh, if this, you've given out a lot of great information. My last question for you is, obviously there's a lot of camaraderie with this group, even though it's a fairly large group of students that yeah. you have in these casts uh, uh, of, yeah. of these performances, but mm -hmm. everybody supports each other. There's yes. no animosity. Oh, no, no. We are. Uh, it may sound cliche and cheesy, but we are a family. In fact, um, I have been known to, before on opening night, uh, play the uh, famous We Are Family song. Um, <laughs> and uh, students have gotten a little bit of dancing, a little bit of you okay. know, singing along with that. And But it is true. I mean, just the other day, we were missing a prop uh, for one of our dress rehearsals. Sure. And the entire cast and crew, we stopped what we were doing, and we started looking around the whole theater for it. And um, that's the type of um, collaboration, but also support uh, that we all have as a family. And that's not just for shows. That's for a theater department, and that's also for the fine and performing arts department as a whole. Well, I'm going to put myself out there to you that if you ever need an extra, like <laughs> third flower from the left, <laughs> I am there. I will volunteer to, to be in one of your performances yeah. as long as the speaking is kept to a minimum <laughs> and no singing and no dancing. I'm there. Uh, I'll cast you on the on the spot. That'd be Perfect. Great. <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have been joined by the, the head of the theater program here at Saguaro High School, Mr. Tim McCandless. They've got a play going on. Real quick plug. Tim, with yeah. w w w if someone wants to go see the performance, when and where is it? So our closing show is tomorrow night, 7 p.m., okay. right here at Saguaro Auditorium. Okay. Tickets are available online at saguarohstheater.com, uh, theater spelled with an R-E. Um, but also we're selling them at the door. And uh, it's a really fun D&D Dungeons & Dragons adventure mixed with kind of the same tone Ooh. as uh, Disney's Onward. Okay. If you, uh, anyone's ever watched that, that uh, Pixar film, it has a nice combination of those two items. Um, uh, pulls at every heartstring in a good way, and I cry every night happy tears, even though I've seen it for like 700 times yeah. <laughs> over the past two months. Um, my students do a great job every night, and they it always brings they always bring something fresh to it. So, yes, by all means, come see it. And uh, you know, worst case scenario, uh, if you can't see it, talk to me, and uh, I might be able to get you some kind of recording. So. Awesome. Okay, Mr. Tim McCandless, head of the theater program here at Saguaro High School. Tim, thank you again so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And Vince. thanks for, and for supporting us. Yeah, I just want to say real quick, I love that the Varsity Sports Show has done a, great, a phenomenal job. I was just telling you before we started the interview, I was able to watch like the Chaparral game a couple weeks ago uh, from home because I couldn't make it in person, and I just think what you guys do is awesome. So Thank please you. keep up the great work because we, oh. we all really love you and appreciate you for it. Oh, my gosh. Listen, to M Ms. A, Mr. Harris, did you hear that? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, Tim. And, uh, folks, Thanks again for joining us. We will be back after halftime. Stick around. There's only a couple minutes left for some great second half action here from Saguaro. Hi, this is Dick Stockton. Join Vince and me on the Varsity Sports Show as we kick off the Summer Spotlight Series. Hi, this is the Director of Community Engagement for Hospice of the Valley, Lynn Sue Cooney. Hi, this is Darren Chapman with Tiger Mountain Foundation. Hi kids, this is DJ Soul Man from the Funk Junkies. This is Raquel Gomez, Program Director of Otta Bay Outdoors. Hi, this is Avery from Teen Lifeline. Just want you to know that you're not alone. Hey, this is Leanne from the Humane Society of Marshall County in Benton, Kentucky. Hi, this is Darla Doss from the Benton Woman's Club of Benton, Kentucky. Hi, this is Kelsey Dickerson, and I start my Saturday mornings the right way. Hi, this is Nicole Thompson, Executive Director at Harvest Compassion Center. Hi, I'm Kate Bemisterfer, the Director of Development and Communications for the Cosanti Foundation. Hi, this is Dana Bailey from Homeless Youth Connection. Hey, this is John Linton with the I Have a Name Project and Let's Be Better Humans. Hello, this is Coach Mike Valadez, and despite the obstacles we face, we all should live by the promise. Hey, this is Bob Jenkins from Marine Corps Law Enforcement Foundation. On behalf of the 15 amazing people featured throughout the summer, thank you for starting your Saturdays listening to the Varsity Sports Show Summer Spotlight Series on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona, Arizona's home for youth, high school, college, and you. Coming this winter to the Varsity Sports Show, AIA, high school, basketball, soccer, and wrestling. Attention, student-athletes, parents, coaches, and administrators. We are contracted affiliates with NFHS. Tired of Pixelot? Our NFHS-authorized platform can spotlight your favorite team with multi-camera and full broadcast crews. We still offer our YouTube channels as well. Single game, multi-game, and season coverage available to meet every budget, including a segment on the Varsity Sports Radio Show on AM 1060 K. 
Shady US Arizona dedicated to your team. We can even help promote your booster businesses. Act fast. The season is right around the corner. Hey fans, the Arizona AIA high school football playoffs are coming. Trust the Varsity Sports Show team to live stream your football playoff games on NFHS. We are an NFHS trusted partner and will spotlight your favorite team better than anyone, including a team segment on Saturday's Varsity Sports Radio Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. We are authorized to cover every round of the football playoffs, including championships. Call or text us to reserve your postseason broadcast and production crew. Time is running out fast. 480-779-9437. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Training Better Athletes was founded by renowned football coach Ron Sowers with the philosophy of training well-rounded young people in mind and body. TBA is the go-to for middle schoolers through the pros. Coach Sowers has worked with all sports but specializes in football offensive and defensive line skills training. Whether it's one-on-one or group training, reach out to Coach Sowers at trainingbetterathletes.com or call him at 602-435-9064. You can't cheat the grind. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show. Our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating a platform to promote young people in extracurricular activities and community outreach. If you are interested in partnering up with the Varsity Sports Show, find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or call or text us at 480-779-9437. The Varsity Sports Show. That ball is a fumble. You took it, you tucked it away, and you ran. Arizona's home for youth, high school, college, and you. Welcome back, folks. Third quarter action. Michael Ortiz kicks off. Deep, deep kick into the hands of Borchard. Noah Borchard, and he is stopped by 33 on the tackle. That is Trey Morrison. Coyotes will have it first and 10 on the 16. So, Ryan, we were talking a little bit off camera here. So, second half action. You're Ryan Freeman talking to your team at halftime. What do you? What message, what adjustments do you make offensively? I think you're trying to get them off balance a little bit. And by getting them off balance, I mean you've got to run the football effectively, and then you've got to take your chances even more effectively. You've got to find the deep ball. You haven't even attempted one so far in the day. The one they did attempt was a really a 15-yard medium range shot. If they can do that, I think they got a chance to get back in it. A little movement up front. That'll be against the Coyotes. It'll bring, bring it back five yards. It'll be first down and 15. Ball will be ball placed on the 15-yard line. All right. So the Coyotes, with an opportunity to start with a more or less, so to speak, Psychologically, a clean slate. Get a good start here. See if you could put a score on the uh, on this drive. Connor Calloway with the carry tries to bounce it outside, but is denied by Thomas DeCesaro. He goes nowhere, but it's unreal that he he did that much to go nowhere. He needs three or four guys just to bring him down every time. Connor Calloway, that is. Yeah, big strong back, and in fact, he had an older brother. Um, Whose, whose first name escapes me, but it was a couple of years ago and uh, in, in the last few years that was their leading rusher, and he was much smaller. You talk about the, the opposite of, <laughs> of this big man here that we see, uh, but his, uh, uh, Callan, I believe was his name, that was just as talented, if not more so, of a running back for the Coyotes. Garcia scrambles. Tristan and Tristan Monday. Brings Garcia down for the sack. Loss of two on the plate will be third down and 14. (laughs) 
Defense here of uh, Jim Camarillo, the Sabercats really coming out and, and making a statement and, and really preventing the Coyotes from getting any kind of rhythm on this first drive. Three by one set, Riley Garcia, the quarterback, back to pass. Garcia evades defenders and is pulled down after he releases the ball. Really close to a safety there. JoJo Clark wreaking havoc on that edge. Or even an intentional grounding could have been called there, I thought. Either way, Garcia barely gets it off and we'll see. Ah, there is the penalty marker. It came in very, very late. See what the call is here. Intentional grounding in the end zone. Safety. And it is a safety. Yeah. Add two to the scoreboard. Sabercats lead the Coyotes 29 to zero. Yep, intentional grounding in the end zone. It should have been, it came in very late nonetheless though. Javen Jacobs will go back there to return it eventually. Sabercats get an extra two points on the defensive side of the ball. I tell you what, that the edge uh, uh, pressure from the Sabercats is is as good as anything around the state of Arizona. I mean, they you've got Tristan Monday on one side, you bring in JoJo Clark on the other, and and that the pressure that they give the opposing tackles is just uh, uh, it's uh, it gives them fits. One, I mean, especially on that third down, they get, they start to turn it up right around that marker. And also, I mean, you can argue that's an underrated part of this team. They, that pressure's really been dialed on as the season has gone on. Camarillo's been more comfortable with his secondary and allowed for them, allowed for more blitzes to enter the, the fold. Punting for the Sabercats, number 39. Good deep punt into the hands of DeCesaro. DeCesaro along the left sideline, breaks free, continues on his track, and finally pulled down for a touchdown saving tackle by Gavin Parks. Wow. Yeah. I mean, not Javen Jacobs, but Thomas DeCesaro, and Jacobs gave him a great block, so and he's not only the electrifying individual player, but the great team player. And Thomas DeCesaro shows he can do a little bit of return game. He's had a pick six this year. I think he's had two pick sixes this year. So we know he's got some kind of speed. But that was another example of it right there. When we were calling baseball games in the spring, did we see that speed? I mean, he was a pitcher, but and I, think, I guess he played short. Or did he play I think second? he played a little in, infield, didn't he? He played short, short yeah. Shortstop. I think he would play. I think he played second maybe for like an inning or something. But he was mostly that pitcher, that yeah. shortstop. And yeah. He never really flashed it shorter at, at the plate but because he, he was always just getting, seemed like singles the entire time, just yeah. a consistent single hitter. Devin Dampier in at quarterback for the Sabercats. Jacobs in motion, Dampier back to pass, finds the open receiver, Janias Marsh, and comes back to catch that football. Thought he would have had a little better of a spot there, but it looks like, uh, call it an eight yard gain, it'll be second down and two. That's a tough throw from uh, Devin Dampier. It's a strong throw. There's two ways you can measure arm strength. I mean, how far the guy's throwing it and how strong he's putting it in there on a, on a cross field throw like that. He put it right into the numbers of Janias Marsh, perfect. Three by one set for the Sabercats. Jaden Matthews in the backfield, pass thrown to Jacobs who spins his way to a first down, tackled on the play by number 22, Austin Earl. Counteracts the power arm there with the silky throw out in the flat to Jacobs. He can do it a little bit of all and he's gonna be the starter next year. It's pretty safe to say for this Sabercats offense, maybe even the undisputed starter with Dutchikal leaving and Cole Goodwin being the return, the only other returner. Silky throw. I've never Silky. heard that expression before. That's pretty good. Here we go. First and ten now. Ball is on the 11 yard line. Dampier sends Matthews in motion. Dampier back to pass. Dampier looks over the middle, all alone. Janias Marsh for the SaberCat touchdown. Spot him for six. I mean, great throw, great catch. Janias Marsh gets that one foot down, perfectly timed throw. Only spot that Jay, sorry, 
that Devin Dampier could put it right at the face mask. The 11-yard reception for Marsh puts his team up 35-0 as the officials are uh, back. bringing something back. Ineligible receiver downfield. Wow, okay. So the ball will be spotted on the 18-yard line, 17, where it remains first down. It'll be first and 15. Dampier getting the play from the sideline. Got a solid core group of personnel in the game. Janias Marsh, Chris Nimcheski, Javen Jacobs, Jojo Clark, and Jaden Matthews on the carry. Tackle by Callaway. Jaden Matthews on the carry. Couldn't quite break free, and, and that'll frustrate Jason Mons a little. He got a chance to finally see his quarter, his, I guess his, his, his 1B quarterback get a chance to throw a couple times. He looked good every single time the ball came out of his hand and he threw a perfect touchdown and it's all worth nothing in a lot of ways because you gotta, it gets called back. Yeah, that is, it's discouraging, but when you've got this, this much talent, this much commitment, then you know, you just don't make any excuses and you do it again. 100%. Jojo Clark, one of the receivers split out wide here with an empty set in the backfield. Matthews in motion. Dampier back to pass, finds Matthews in the flat. Matthews continues, he's just shy of the goal line. And the Sabercats will have it first and goal. Go Wildcat again maybe, I don't know. I mean, not with Dampier in there I suppose. Maybe some, corner, some, some, some sort of read option call. Or a fade to the end zone to the big Chris Nimcheski. First and goal from the one. Matthews and Jacobs in the backfield. It'll be Javen. It's got to be. Jacobs in motion to Matthews. Matthews pushing his way, is stopped short. Coyotes doing a great job of uh, pushing back, and in on the stop is number seven, Matthew Rising. They love that little two backer, one goes in motion out into the flat and then they hand it off or the occasional, when they've got the one backer next to the quarterback, mostly Dampier, they'll move him out into the flat and Devin will kind of fake a throw out there and start to run straight up the field. They have a lot of that, but Gardas checks in and Monday, so they're gonna go jumbo and physical up front for second and one. Second and goal from the one. So he's, yeah, under seven minutes remaining here and uh, Dampier on the keeper, gets himself into the end zone for a Sabercat. Oh, we've got a flag down. Okay, false start. Mm. All right, rewind that one. Second and six. <laughs> Two touchdowns on this drive. Official starts the clock, 644 and counting. Second down and goal from the six. Nice time-consuming drive, if, if nonetheless, if no points are to come from this drive at the yeah. very least. Good job at dominating the line of scrimmage to Once open up again the second half. Tight package here, and the little shovel pass inside gets it closer to the end zone, and he's in. Sabercat touchdown by number 18, JoJo Clark. The six-yard shovel pass reception. And he's in. Yeah, you see that play a lot in the NFL on two-point conversions nowadays. They little, they like to pitch it, the fake the pitch outside or fake a roll outside, and then they just shove it up the middle to the tight end. Or the uh, the Chiefs do that a lot with Travis Kelsey, who's a good enough athlete, and JoJo Clark certainly is an athlete at the tight end position. Good drive from Devin Dampier, really efficient. Michael Ortiz in to attempt the extra point for the SaberCats. The holder, Derek Calderon. Snap is good. Hold is down, and the kick is up and good. And the Sabercats now lead the Coyotes 36-0, 6-17 remaining here on the Sabercat Network. Vincent Ryan will be back. 
24th Street Dental Biltmore is the place to go for cosmetic dentistry and Invisalign. Doctors Braden, Turner, and the team are ready to put your dental needs first. They are the Valley's Invisalign experts. Schedule a free exam today and mention the Varsity Show for complimentary in-house whitening. From cleanings to more comprehensive dental, 24th Street Dental Biltmore in Phoenix is the first step toward a healthier smile. Located in the heart of the Biltmore, call or stop by 602-468-1135. Proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Welcome back, folks, and uh, as the teams prepare here, Saguaro to kick off, Michael Ortiz, and deep to receive the Coyotes, Noah Borchard, midway through the thor- third quarter. Ryan, your thoughts here on this upcoming drive? Um, I mean, Campo, it's, it's, they're not out of it yet, technically. I mean, mathematically, they're not if they can get enough drives. 36 nothing, six minutes to go in the third, 18 minutes to go in the game. They need to score on this drive. That's what you're looking for at this point. Any way you can. Ball lands in the hands of Borchard, who takes off full sprint right up the middle of the field. And he runs into 33, Morrison. Sabercats will have it first and 10. Ball will be spotted right about the 24-yard line. Couple of new faces into the game for the Sabercats. Deontay LeMaid will play at the defensive tackle spot, number 98, as well as number 66. I believe that is, um, do not quote me on this. I'm not going to take the risk. Magnum it's West also in the game at defensive end uh, for the Sabercats. Riley Garcia, the quarterback, two-by-two two set. Back to pass, Garcia, right in the middle of the field, finds his receiver, and on the reception is Ashton, or excuse me, Jersey Blazing game. You can see what he can do when he's got time. I mean, plenty of time there off the play action, and the offensive line wins their battle up front, and Riley's able to just hang out in the pocket for a little while and deliver a nice check down for eight yards. It, I'm not going to say football's that simple, because it's obviously not, but... If you can start to dominate on the line of scrimmage, it makes the game a lot easier for your quarterback and in turn your receivers. Second and two now for the Coyotes. Two backs in the backfield. They give inside to Callaway, who gets across that first down pylon. Gain of three. First and 10. Ball will be spotted on the Coyote 36. Clock continues to move, coming up on five minutes remaining in the third quarter. I want one of those winter coats that Derek English is wearing down there. Those are kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Kind of cool looking. Looks warm. Garcia back to pass. Garcia scrambles, evading West. Right along the sideline, threads the needle. And a flag comes flying, but it was caught by Borchard, an amazing grab. I have to go back and look at the replay of that because I don't know how he was able to hit Borchard on the sideline there with the defender just playing him that tight. But we'll see what the penalty call is here. We've got replay on the Varsity Sports Show now. That, That will go against the defense, but it is declined, and it'll be first and 10. Yeah, we do. We do have uh, replay. Yeah. Next level technology That's right. here there from you Saguaro go. High Courtesy School. Courtesy of our technical director, Mr. Samuel J. Rivera, the most talented director in America. Do they have it up in Canyon View too right now? Or? Uh, they do. Justice oh, wow. Miranda running it out there as well. Riley Garcia and a little bit of movement in the backfield. Got penalty markers on the field. The flags go a flying. Yeah, enjoy the uh, the replay technology that the Varsity Sports Show is bringing. That'll go against the Coyotes. We'll bring it back five yards. A little bit of movement. Varsity Sports Show running three games tonight on YouTube. Really proud of this crew. They work extremely hard, and we'll acknowledge them as the game goes on. But uh, we'll talk about those other games. Garcia, an edge pressure coming for the Sabercats. Garcia back to pass. And looked like he tried to get a little screen play there. Falls incomplete. 
Which is in theory the right call when you bring when you, when you see edge pressure, yeah. but when it's that effective right in your face and on the outsides, it's almost too hard to just stand in there and deliver a tough throw because that's exactly what it is when you've got pressure coming at you from all facets. Games tonight, uh, Canyon View out in the West Valley has a big game, uh, hosting Independence, big league game. Canyon View at four and three, still in the playoff hunt, having to win out their final three, but. Uh, that is a game that we are broadcasting on one of our other YouTube channels. Garcia back to pass. Garcia scrambles. And again, it's caught. Wow. Another great throw. I mean, right at the number, right where the only place his receiver could catch that one. Williamson on that grab, a very talented receiver for the Coyotes, Boston Williamson, getting that first down. And it'll be first and 10. Ball is on the Sabercat 31. He's got to have some offers somewhere, right? Uh, we, uh, we have another crew out at Desert Mountain High School tonight. The uh, Wolves are hosting at homecoming the Sunny Slope Vikings. Three by one set for the Coyotes. Garcia back to pass and met on both sides on the sack. Tristan Monday on one side and 43 Benjamin Cotton on the other nowhere to run loss of seven on the play it'll be second down and 17 Cotton one of the seniors on senior night making a play out there for the defense 32 people honored tonight by Saguaro for their graduate for their four years here at the school amazing Congratulations to all the seniors tonight being recognized. Garcia back to Pat. Oh, correction. New quarterback in the game. Number 15 for the Coyotes. That was Jacob Brooks. Brooks completes that pass. Gets them back to the original line of scrimmage. They didn't touch another another quarterback other than Riley Garcia a couple weeks ago at William, against Williamsfield. Last week, though, against Gilbert, they did play a little bit of a two-man, more than they have tonight. Mostly it's been Riley tonight. Last week they probably split it about two-thirds Riley Garcia, one-third Brooks, and obviously tonight it's been heavy Riley Garcia, but Brooks gets into the game. He's got another strong arm that they can throw out there. Calls a personal foul against the Sabercats. Sabercats getting flagged for a personal foul will give the Coyotes an additional amount of real estate, moving them closer inside the red zone. After the assessment of the penalty, it'll be first down. First and down uh, it'll be an automatic first down. Ball will be placed on the Sabercat 16-yard line. First and 10. Three receivers to one side. The give inside to Connor Calloway. Calloway rumbles inside Connor and on is just shy of the goal line. Ball will be spotted about the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal on the one. Tough to bring down indeed, and he makes it, gets it all the way to the one. I, I, if I had that guy as my running back, I think I'd just put him under center here and tell him to go get a yard for me. I know it makes very little sense, maybe even put him in the shotgun and have him do it, but something wildcat when you got that big of a dude back there. Well, Connor Calloway's a pretty good linebacker as well, so he, the big decision that will have to be made on his part is that does he play offense or defense in college? He feels more like a linebacker to me out there when you watch him on the defense. He, he doesn't make every play, but he always makes the small one. Brooks trying to get some push into the end zone, gets pushed back. And he's in. Touchdown, Coyotes. Touchdown, number 15, Jacob Brooks, the one-yard keeper. Puts the Coyotes on the board. Yeah, late decision there, but it looked like they got the initial push, and then the secondary push was what pushed them out of the end zone. Six points on the board for Campo, and steady run game, but also that passing game expanded a little. Riley Garcia had to make some tough throws, and he did, and they looked better for it. Well, clearly, they needed to score on this drive to somewhat keep them in this ball game. Now, with two minutes remaining, 14 minutes overall in the game, who knows? The extra point attempt is up and good. Jace Hudson and with 209 remaining in the quarter, the Sabercats lead the Coyotes 
We have a flag thrown. We'll find out what the call is after the officials are finished conferring. We're going to take a break here, and uh, we'll be back. Are you unable to do the things you love? Do you know your daily habits could be better to enhance your quality of life? Are you suffering with chronic pain or chronic illness and can't find the right solution that works for you? Fix Body Group was created so you have a team of professionals to help you achieve your health goals and get you back to doing what you love again. In Scottsdale, go to FixBodyGroup.com or call 480-795-5329. Fix Body Group, proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show and Fitness Minute with Tyler Mayer. And welcome back, folks. The uh, penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. It was against the Sabercats, uh, and that's why you see Ooh. that uh, T being <laughs> placed on the Sabercat 45-yard line. That's not fun. That's very Jace close. Hudson will kick off from there. This one clearly will... Uh, Ten out, Sabercat. And Saguaro calls the timeout. We're going to keep it here. Um, so, Ryan, too little, too late? Um, depends on if you get the onside kick. For me, I think that's clearly what they're trying to do, and that's why Sawaro called the timeout to better prepare themselves for what's going to come. If you get the onside kick, you got great field position. You put another touchdown on the board. It's 36-14. Hopefully you can get that before the third break, the third quarter ends, and you've got a 22-point deficit with a quarter to football to play. But never say never. I would say is probably what Coach Ryan Freeman is telling his, telling his group in the huddle right now. Got it. Well, and yes, obviously you would need to, to have any kind of chance. You, you, you need to get another drive here before the end of the quarter. And uh, going with a little squib up front, and, and Saguaro is anticipating that by moving their guys up a little bit. Hands team out there as well this time now. Yeah. And that's what they do. And the ball was recovered by the Sabercats by number 23. And that was uh, John Butler the third. So Sabercats will have it first and 10 on their own 29 yard line with 206 remaining in the quarter. So who's the quarterback gonna be, Ryan? Um, I think at this point it doesn't really matter who's going to come out there. It looks like it's Cole Goodwin who is, and that probably aids or your running game even more. Ridge Dutch a call. So I keep seeing Cole Goodwin and hoping well, he plays the, quarterback. Yeah, he's lining up at receiver, so that's great. Getting on the field, and uh, he's he's such an athlete, I you can't him keep him off the yeah. field. Yeah, you got to play him. Yeah, I agree. I liked him at quarterback, and I think that would aid the running game at this point. In the, at this point in the game, you just want to run the football down and keep the score low. Dutch a call back to pass, evading defenders, keeps it. Shows off some of that running ability that he has and uh, gains a yard on the play. It'll be second and nine. Not the best decision, I think, to tuck and run from Ridge. Probably could have climbed the pocket as he did. And as he climbs the pocket, he tucked it early. And if he had climbed that pocket, maybe a step or two more, maybe then you've got enough momentum behind you to take a deep shot. Take the risk. Up 29. Get a highlight reel tape going. I don't know. Bunch set out wide for the Sabercats. On second down, Brian Bogardis in the backfield. Bogardis on the carry, right up the middle, pushing a pile, a couple stiff arms before he's pushed back. And in on the stop, number 83 for the Coyotes, that is Mahel Moronis. Moronis is a junior, tight end defensive end, big body in there, and uh, really the only one that could take down Bogardis on that play one-on-one. -on -one. He's 6'3", 240. I think I want to see Ridge take a shot. Maybe not here, but at some point on this drive. You gave Devin Dampier adequate, adequate time to go and show his arm, and I'll give Ridge the same chance. Third and four now for the Sabercats. JoJo Clark also in the ballgame. And once again, the quick give to Bogardis inside. Not quite enough for that first down. He'll get a couple of more there. Maybe a gain of two. It'll be fourth and two. 
get a two yards on the play. As we await the decision from head coach slash offensive coordinator Jason Mons. I think they're gonna take it to the uh, break. 10 seconds, nine seconds, yep. They'll talk about it, take a break. And we will have one more quarter. From Saguaro High School, it's the Sabercats on senior night, final home game of the regular season, hosting the Campo Verde Coyotes. Sabercats lead the Coyotes 36-7. On the Sabercat Network, Varsity Sports Show, Vince and Ryan will be right back. Hey guys, Vince here to talk to you about a good friend of mine named Bob Jenkins. Bob is a Marine Corps veteran. Bob and his younger brother DJ own Vets Built Contracting. For five years, they've been hiring and putting veterans to work. Vets Built is licensed, bonded, and insured, both residential and commercial, specializing in renovations, remodeling, new build, casitas, safe rooms, or small commercial TI work. If you're a skilled veteran looking for work, a homeowner in need of work, or a commercial business needing TI work, please call Bob or DJ at Vets Built at 480-584-3675. Coming this winter to the Varsity Sports Show, AIA, high school, basketball, soccer, and wrestling. Attention, student athletes, parents, coaches, and administrators. We are contracted affiliates with NFHS. Tired of Pixelot? Our NFHS authorized platform can spotlight your favorite team with multi-camera and full broadcast crews. We still offer our YouTube channels as well. Single game, multi-game, and season coverage available to meet every budget, including a segment on the Varsity Sports Radio Show on AM 1060 K. US Arizona dedicated to your team. We can even help promote your booster businesses. Act fast. The season is right around the corner. Welcome back. Fourth quarter about to begin here. The Sabercats on fourth and three. Devin Dampier checks in at quarterback now for Saguaro. Dampier scrambles to his left, keeps it. Gets a first down and then some, runs into his own player and a Coyote. Tackled by 21, Richard Chavez. And the Sabercats will have it first and 10 on the Coyote 47 yard line. You know, the, uh, the bleachers here, uh, Ryan, uh, the home side here, the Saguaro, yeah, Sabercats are concrete. Nice thing about them is that metal bleachers get cold, you know, in the winter. These don't. These are concrete, but you're sitting on concrete. You're sitting on concrete. I see some people sitting on pillows. Yeah. So I'm going to bring a pillow. Dampier, empty backfield. Low snap. Dampier picks it up, goes deep to Janias Marsh over the top and just out of the outstretched arms of Marsh. Yeah, great throw from Devin Dampier. His, his, his dad was loving it in the crowd. He thought it was a touchdown for sure, and that's the type of throw you want him to have. You want him to take that type of shot, and that's the type of throw you're looking to see more of in this offense next year in terms of the growth of Devin Dampier, the growth of his game, which has so far been a lot of checkdowns. They want to extend it to those deep shots to open it up even another dimension. Out wide, Cole Goodwin and Dampier. And the give to Bogardis. Bogardis gains a few more before he is brought down by Moronis. And it'll be second down. Gain of three. So going back to those bleach, do you do you prefer the metal bleachers or do you prefer the No no I, I prefer the concrete in the say. winter, but I don't like the concrete after sitting here for two hours. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm a soccer guy. We have winter. We have that's a winter sport. I love yeah. the concrete. Okay. I could live with that. Yeah. Wait till you're my age. <laughs> Dampier, shotgun <laughs> formation, two by two set. Jacobs in motion. Give to Jacobs around the right edge. Jacobs continues on his track and goes down right about the first down pylon. We'll find out by the official spot. If he got it, it's going to be very close. Inches. And he did not get it. It'll be second and one. Fourth and one. Okay, I was looking at the uh, stick on the sideline there. It still said one. And All right, fourth and one with uh, under 10 minutes remaining in the ball game. Can 
QB sneak, power run game. And Dampier with the keeper gets the first down. One for one. Gain four on the play. First and 10, ball is inside the 35 yard line. It'll be first and 10 on the Coyote 34. And that's a good play call. I mean, you send everyone to the right, you move a little bit of motion to confuse it a little even, even more. Your offensive line obviously has to win their battles up front. They do it, and Devin Dampier goes to the left, away from all the commotion, picks up an easy first down. Join us tomorrow morning on the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. I will be broadcasting the show from Tempe. Devin Dampier, shotgun formation. Little ASU football tailgate? Yeah, I'll tell you more in a minute. <laughs> Dampier scrambling, goes deep again for Thomas DeCesaro who catches it on the edge, the back corner of the end zone for a Sabercat touchdown. Defense, offense, special teams, he can do it all. Javen Jacobs, we talk about him all the time as the multi-threat guy. Triple threat guy, Thomas to Cesaro. And look at the celebration that he got. That it's infectious. He, his teammates are so happy for him. He's excited. It was a 34-yard connection between Dampier and to Cesaro in the, the back end of the end zone. So in reality, it was a 44-yard connection, even though that's not what the stats sheet will say. Michael Ortiz in to kick the extra point. Kick is up. And good. And with that, the Sabercats now lead the Coyotes 43 to 7 with 8.59 remaining. We're going to keep it here because I want to talk about tomorrow morning. So, tomorrow, today, actually, today, had an opportunity to attend the ASU Legends Luncheon. Now, this weekend, the uh, ASU football game is going to be honoring the 25 year anniversary of the Pac-10 Championship Rose Bowl team from 1996, of which I am very fortunate to have been a part of that, that team. I was on a member of the coaching staff and, and uh, it was a great experience for me and, and uh, one that I'll never forget. But seeing the, the former players who are now adults, family men out in the community, serving their community in different capacities and uh, uh, it, it was just a very emotional gathering today at the Legends Luncheon uh, that was held. Uh, and I'll, we'll be seeing those guys again tomorrow. Now, tomorrow morning, the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060 KDUS, 9 to 10 AM, will be done from a tailgate that an alumni group called the Soul Devils are putting on. And I'm really excited about that because uh, we'll be uh, spending time going through a recap Thursday and Friday night football. We'll talk a little ASU football. It's going to be a lot of fun. and. Uh, yeah, tune in. Michael Ortiz to kick off for the Sabercats. Borchard in the end zone. It'll be a touchback. And we also have two surprise guests that will be joining us tomorrow. Is Jake Plummer one of them? Uh, I cannot confirm nor deny that. But uh, let's just say that, that, uh, that they are members of the 2016. So... Two surprise guests. The 96 Pac-10 champs, right? Yes. Pac-10. We had 10, 10 schools, and you had to Ooh. win seven to go to a bowl game. Now you can you can win, f you know, five in certain circumstances, and, and there's 64 bowl games out there. Last uh, Back then there were maybe 12. The Pac-10. Anyway. All right, here we go. <laughs> Coyotes have it first and 10, four receivers. Riley Garcia, the quick screen. Garcia's pass is complete. And in on the stop for the Sabercats was Omar Lascano. Second and four, 840 remaining in the football game. Coyotes obviously need a sense of urgency here to uh, move the football down the field. Three by one set on second down. Garcia, the quick give inside Ferber to Ethan Ferber. Yeah, good little carry from Ferber. Gets the, gets the legs churning, gets a little bit of steam behind him, gets a first down. Clock will tick to about eight minutes to go. And I mean, now I can probably confidently tell you, a little too late. 36 yeah. going, they're not running much tempo. I think they kind of know it too. 
which will be a little frustrating, I think, from the coaching staff's perspective. <laughs> Garcia, back to pass. Goes over the top and overthrows the intended That's receiver it, there. It was Callaway. Callaway's got some good speed for a big man running uh, Brings up second down and against a corner. Yeah, that speed runs. I mean, you mentioned his brother who was great speedy little back. Maybe Kaden. the speed is. Caden was his name. Kaden? That's it. Caden Callaway. Caden Callaway. Maybe that speed kind of runs in the family and he just yeah. got lucky with the size. I want to see how far Riley Garcia can throw a football, like legitimately full swing. On second down, Garcia back to pass. Scrambling and taken down in the backfield for the sack. Once again, it's 43, Benjamin Cotton. He doesn't even get the chance to throw the ball at all there. Ben Cotton on the blitz, late blitz. He kind of arrived a little late. The offensive line was already occupied and Ben Cotton roamed free into the backfield, brought down Riley Garcia. Third and 19, a nine yard loss for the Coyotes on that sack. Clock continues to run, coming up on seven minutes remaining in the football game. Garcia back to pass. The screen finds his receiver, and that was Camden Gunlock on the reception. Brought down by 45, Alejandro Echeverria. Good job by the defense to force a uh, force a punt there, and I don't know. It just kind of came to my head. Now we were talking about the uh, the concrete stands here. Remember yeah. the one time you called the game from the uh, the bed of your truck? Yes, that was at Veritas Prep last year. We that was we awesome. were the only media outlet that called a game in every single division in the state of Arizona last year. Javen Jacobs on the return. More on that in a minute. Jacobs finds a lane along the sideline, continues. Jacobs nearly outruns the punter, and he is tripped up, but there is a flag at midfield. Probably a block in the back, which you're going to hate to see it again, but I think Javon Javins, Javin Jacobs really wanted that touchdown there. He's a little disappointed to get tripped up. Even 1A? Correct. Eight man? State we championship did call it. game. Yeah, that's right. We did Mogion. do it. Eight man. Yeah. Mogollon and uh, Williams. It's Mogollon? It's yeah. not Mag I thought it was yeah. McGowan for a long time. And that'll go against the Sabercats. We'll bring it back where they'll have it first and 10. Yeah, in light of the, uh, the pandemic last year, in nine weeks, we called 20 games. And, uh, and it was an incredible season. We, we handled every single division, including the Open and the playoffs, uh, throughout that season, in that nine-week season. We called 1A to 6A and the Open, and we made it a goal, and we got it accomplished in that 1A state championship. That was our final, final game that we had to uh, get to in order to, to say that we called every single division. Quarterback Ridge Dutch a call. And slightly underthrows his receiver on the play, and that was Cole Goodwin. It'll be second down. I want to see Cole Goodwin get into space. I think he could do something, something pretty spectacular out there. If you give him ball in the flat, maybe give him a chance to juke a few guys and get a, get ahead of steam going. Could see a touchdown. I don't know. Second and ten now for the SaberCats, and. Uh, Got a couple of substitutions here and there, but for the most part, the core of your starters are, have remained in the game. Ridge Dutch a call the quarterback. Jacobs in motion, and the inside handoff to Matthews. Matthews stopped on the play by Callaway. Get four yards on the play. It'll be third and That's six. Five forty-four remaining. Folks, join us tomorrow. As I said, tomorrow morning, Varsity Sports Show, nine a.m. on AM ten sixty. Dutch a call.
trying the hard count there. We'll be joined by Coach Jason Mons for the Sabercat Report. He'll break down the game, give us a little post-game wrap, as well as we'll have some other features, a, a recap of Thursday night's Game of the Week that we did last night out at Goldwater High School. Uh, we'll talk to Canyon View head football coach Nick Garretts uh, after their game from tonight. Goodwin on the reception is tripped up. So close. We'll see if he gets the spot. And just short. About a yard short where it'll be fourth down and one. We'll also be joined by the uh, HJCAC Hohokam Junior College Athletic Conference associate head coach of the Salt River Scorpions, Coach Alec Horn. He's going to talk a little recruiting and uh, talk about his team's success this season. They've been winning some ball games out at Salt River. That was a uh, failure to convert on four. No, oh, they're punting. I'm punting so away. Oh, come Michael on. Michael Ortiz into punt. Have some fun. And uh, good high kick, great hang time. My gosh, Boston Williamson just lets it go. And it'll be downed on the 15-yard line. We'll also be joined by, uh, as I said, we're going to talk a little ASU football, talk a little bit about the 96 Pac-10 championship team uh, between 9 and 10 a.m. on AM 1060. Have a, a couple of old uh, Sun Devil uh, alums that uh, we'll talk to that played on that team, uh, guys that, uh, that I actually coached back then. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we will also do our Beachin' with Beal Southern California Surf Report. Looking forward to that. That's always fun. I think that one's my favorite. Beachin' with Beal? Yeah, you yeah. like it because it, uh, he, they, he insults me the whole time. Yeah. yeah. Riley Garcia, the quarterback, four receivers split out wide. Garcia looking to go long, comes underneath, and is it intercepted? It is not. Hinton. Brings it in out of bounds, and uh, great job defensively by the freshman. Yeah, kind of a kind of left enough room. He play, he's a freshman, but that's a senior type, four year of experience type of move right there from the from the corner. He kind of lets leaves a little bit of room to bait Riley Garcia into making the throw, and then just jumps it with ease. Just too too bad he ran out of turf. Second and ten now for the Coyotes with 4:07 remaining in the ball game. Garcia. Oh, excuse me, that was Brooks in at quarterback. And the handoff inside, McGavick. And it'll be third and seven. Join us, folks, tomorrow night for HJCAC football, Hohokam Junior College Athletic Conference. We've got two games that we'll be broadcasting. We'll be out at uh, Campo Verde High School where the Gila River Hawks host. Who do they host? They are hosting, I uh, believe, the Papago Pumas. Ooh, that would be a good game. And Brooks's pass is completed. Tackled along the edge. Down for the Coyotes. By 22. That was Jeremy Campbell. It'll be fourth down. Loss of yardage on the play. And uh, out at Santan Charter in Gilbert, uh, excuse me, out of Santan Charter, it'll be Papago Pumas hosting the... Well, in, in Campo, it's going to be Gila River and Salt River. So the Gila River yes. Hawks and the Salt River Salt Scorpions. River Scorpions. And the other one in at Santan Papago Charter... Papago Pumas hosting the uh, Sonoran Sidewinders. Sidewinders are from Tucson. And, uh, Good guess. That'll be, a, that'll be a nice matchup there. The Pumas have been uh, playing for first team in the league all season long, and the Sidewinders got their first win last week. Oh. Um, so it'll be an interesting football game. And both games are at 7 p.m., and we are streaming them. So it'll be a lot of fun. We're, uh, we're going to be broadcasting both games. Speaking of good guess, you, can you give me any hints on who the Sun Devil? Come on, I want to know. Come on. No hints? Nope. Nope. Nothing? Just you have to. You got to tune in to find out. Not even like an Aflac uh, trivia question nope. of the game? Nope, you mm. got to tune in to find out. I Okay, here's a hint. I coached both of them. Oh, well, that leaves uh, about 90, 95 guys? No, no, I'm, I'm saying I coached them. There were guys, there were there were t uh, 12 coaches on staff back then, including head football coach, the late Bruce Snyder. 
uh, and, uh, and each of the coaches had different position groups that they worked with. Okay. So do you you don't remember the oh. uh, position group I worked with? I forget if it was. Now I did. I back then I handled the the young guys on the defensive scout team. That was one of my responsibilities. I did work with special teams as well, but I was also uh, I worked with the offensive line. line. Yeah. So I couldn't decide between the line or the running. There's back your group. hint. Offensive lineman. Yes. Vince Delisio, offensive line coach, offensive line assistant coach. Yes. Offensive line assistant. Yep. First and and uh, ten for. The Coyotes here, Brooks in at quarterback. Receiver split out wide, single back in the backfield. We've got penalty flags down. I think there was some movement on the offensive line, and there was, so that will come back five yards. Charge against the Coyotes is the five yard penalty. It'll be first down and 15 yards to go. First and 15, ball is on the 20 eight yard line with 248 remaining. Want to take a moment here and we'll wait till this play ends to acknowledge our crew. The give inside McGavick he has a little bit of running room but he stopped just past the original line of scrimmage. Alejandro Echeverria with the tackle for the Sabercats. And Echeverria on the stop. It'll be second down and nine. So giving special acknowledgement to our crew, McGavick inside, grinds out a couple more. Everything starts and finishes with our technical director, Mr. Sammy Rivera, doing an outstanding, exceptional job. Last night he stepped in and uh, provided analysis uh, while we had Austin Ford directing the broadcast. So. Uh, Sammy will be joining us tomorrow morning to give us a post-game recap of the Thursday night game of the week where we're joined by Goldwater head football coach Frank Lout. Our camera crew tonight, the Kelly brothers, Declan and Finn, they're Saguaro High School students. They have been nothing short of exceptional this season in running our cameras. You got penalty markers on the field. Glenn Gable. No. Gable is a good guess, though, but uh, Gable's a good guy. Gable uh, uh, played guard and tackle on that Rose Bowl team. Against the Sabercats. After the assessment of a penalty, it will be a first down for the Coyotes. And offsides against Saguaro will move the chains for the Coyotes. It'll be first and ten. Gray Rugamer. No. Actually, Gray coaches, uh, I believe he's, uh, he may still be coaching for the Green Bay Packers. So he was in town, ironically, in town for this event. <laughs> they had a game last night, big win over the Cardinals. It's a good game. Single back in the backfield. And the ball handed off by Brooks. Pat Thompson. Nope. Over four. Okay. And... Uh, It'll be second down and five. I can't believe you didn't. There were a couple of key guys off of that group, but I'm uh, just anyway, I was, a couple I'll, others. Pat Thompson was I'll, a key I'll, member of that, that unit. I'll keep trying again. McGavick continues on with the push, gets the first down. On the carry. 28 seconds remaining in the football game. Folks, thanks again for tuning in. And next week, we are going to be next Friday night out at Notre Dame Prep. And that'll be a 7 o'clock kickoff. We've, we've gotten so spoiled with uh, so many of these home games here. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I was I was out for the Chaparral game, and you had stepped in and, and done a, a great job on that game, calling that game, Ryan. But I've only done one away game for these guys, and it was uh, the season opener at McClintock. Yeah, and McClintock was pretty nice to us. Uh, yeah. Chaparral a little less so, but we worked with it. We had a great time out yeah. there, me and Nick Borgia, who you got the privilege to call uh, a game with last week. Um, um, but I, I, I'm very ready to see Notre Dame prep, a, a big game down the stretch. They already, have, have, as the Sabercats have already beaten Horizon, so they kind of hold their own destiny in the 5A Santan region and their own destiny in terms of the Open 8 rankings. Uh, Notre Dame prep will be the last kind of 
I would say, toughish team that the Sabercats will face before op the Open, or hopefully the Open, at the very least being a high-ranking seed in 5A. Um, and I'm, I'm ready for that one, and then obviously Gilbert to come a week later after that away at, against the Tigers, who I've gotten the chance to see a couple times this year. Kyle Murphy. So join us tomorrow morning on the Varsity Sports Show when we talk about the 1996 Pac-10 championship team in the Arizona State Sun Devils. Uh, McGavick on the reception, out of bounds. And we'll be joined by special guests Kyle Metallica Murphy and Sun Devil All-American Hall of Famer Juan Roque. Wow. Big hitters. Only the best, Vince. Only the best. That's all I bring in. Only the best. As it should be. 21 seconds remaining on the clock. His nickname is Metallica? Yeah, because he used to do a segment on uh, 98 KUPD when he was an undergrad. Uh, he would pick a, a Metallica song of the week. <laughs> it's genius. And on the reception, finally dragged down in a scrum. With the tackle. Number 17 for the Coyotes. Uh, Tristan Carrera. Carrera. And we have a timeout call. We're going to take a timeout as well with 11 seconds remaining. Stick around, folks. Thanks again for joining us. Hey fans, the Arizona AIA high school football playoffs are coming. Trust the Varsity Sports Show team to live stream your football playoff games on NFHS. We are an NFHS trusted partner and will spotlight your favorite team better than anyone, including a team segment on Saturday's Varsity Sports Radio Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. We are authorized to cover every round of the football playoffs, including championships. Call or text us to reserve your postseason broadcast and production crew. Time is running out fast. 480-779-9437. Welcome back, folks. The final 11 seconds of the football game here out at Saguaro High School. The Sabercats leading the Coyotes 43-7. As a result of tonight's game, the Coyotes will fall to 3-5 and five on the season. Pass completed to number 80. Garcia on the reception. That was Alston Garcia. Uh, and the uh, Sabercats will move to seven and one. Down and one, yard to go for the seven and one. And more importantly, uh, the standings for postseason implications continue to uh, make their push in up through the open, and we'll see how the teams above Saguaro. Well, and I Fair think tonight. I think sorry again. I get yeah. sorry to interrupt. No, no. I think for me, the open is a little odd. That I, somehow, ALA Queen Creek is is six. And the Sabercats are seven. I, I don't understand quite how the computer can can figure that out considering the Sabercats played ALA Queen Creek and, and, and beat them. Yep. I don't quite know how that works, but it's a computer. It doesn't always give you the best thing, as Campo Verde calls a timeout. With four seconds remaining, the Coyotes call a timeout, which uh, bemoans the fans. Yeah, a little, little confused by that, but... Maybe perhaps if there's a message, something that, that uh, coach wants to impart on the team. Coaches will always coach. You know, you despite what the score is, you're always going to coach your team. And, and uh, if there's uh, some information or you see something and it's something that potentially could help you get better for next week, then, uh, then you want to pass that information along. So... But yeah, I think I think for the SaberCats, they're an open eight team. I just think the key for them is not getting stuck in that six, seven, eight spot because an early round trip to Hamilton or Chandler doesn't necessarily spell doom. But you would rather face those teams later down on, on the, later down the road. Agreed. Brooks, the quarterback, back to pass. Brooks scrambling, and uh, no intended receiver in the end zone. And that's it, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, that is another game here out at Saguaro High School, our final game of the regular season. Congratulations to the Sabercats. Once again, join us tomorrow morning, Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060, KDUS, Arizona, where we will have the Sabercat report, among other things, and we'll speak to Coach Jason Mons. On behalf of our crew and fellow broadcaster, Ryan Sikora, I'm Vince Delisio. Have a great night.
Coming this winter to the Varsity Sports Show, AIA, high school, basketball, soccer, and wrestling. Attention student-athletes, parents, coaches, and administrators. We are contracted affiliates with NFHS. Tired of Pixelot? Our NFHS-authorized platform can spotlight your favorite team with multi-camera and full broadcast crews. We still offer our YouTube channels as well. Single game, multi-game, and season coverage available to meet every budget, including a segment on the Varsity Sports Radio Show on AM 1060 K. US Arizona dedicated to your team. We can even help promote your booster businesses. Act fast. The season is right around the corner. Hey fans, the Arizona AIA high school football playoffs are coming. Trust the Varsity Sports Show team to live stream your football playoff games on NFHS. We are an NFHS trusted partner and will spotlight your favorite team better than anyone, including a team segment on Saturday's Varsity Sports Radio Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. We are authorized to cover every round of the football playoffs, including championships. Call or text us to reserve your postseason broadcast and production crew. Time is running out fast. 480-779-9436.